should be on. Anybody hear us out there? Dawn? Brooksville has won the toss and will receive to start okay. the game. Nate will be here talking just here in a few minutes and we'll be ready for the action. Okay, hang on. Okay. Nate, I'm going to turn this part right here down. Okay. You just have to turn it up whenever you're ready.
right. All right, I think we're live and got the technical difficulties out of the way. We're good to go? Okay, cool. All right, welcome everybody to Linden County High School where we have action tonight here on BMG Media of the Vinton County Vikings and the Crooksville Ceramics. Uh, I'm Nathan Lamb. I'll be bringing you the action for the first quarter solo. My partner Brad Rose is down on the field. Uh, he does a great job with the football helmet down there. Um, and he's got to take that thing down. So he'll be up here after about quarter number one. There's a kickoff. It's a pooch. Caught at the 39-yard line. That's where Crooksville will take over. First and ten. Rashke <clears throat> Rashke on the kick there. Benton County coming into this one 1-0, one oh, beating Unioto last week. Crooksville 0-1, oh lost to Waterford in week one, 27-7. Cottrell back to pass, looking deep. And it's picked off by Waltz. He's coming up the sideline. Knocked out of bounds. The 37-yard line. Second interception by Brady Waltz this season. Uh, one in each game so far. I know he had a he had his mind set on setting a record for interceptions this season. He's well on his way. As Brady Waltz slides over from the safety position to pick that one off. 38-yard line. 37-yard line. So here we go, Vitt County quickly on offense. Couldn't ask for a better start. See Braylon Dameron under center. Hand off to Carr around the right side. Slips the tackle, spins and gains about six yards on the play down to the 31. Sprinkle on the tackle. Pickup of six yards on the play. Second down four. <clears throat> Second down and four now. There's a handoff up the middle to Brock Moore. It's about a half a yard on the play. Taken down by Daniel Chapman. It is Military Appreciation Night here at Vinton County High School. All military veterans and active duty members can get in free if you're still out there thinking about coming up. There's a run by Colley. Gets the first down. Cody Colley. Brought down at the it's like 25 yard line. Except the first down, Vinton <laughs> County. 10.42 to go in the first quarter. First and 10 for Vinton County on the 25-yard line of Brooksville. Dameron now looks over to Carr on the swing pass. It's caught. Nice block there. And Zane Carr gets down close to a first down. Looks like he's brought down by number six there, Trenton Cottrell there. Quarterback and linebacker slash safety on defense. Trenton the second down and two. Pickup of eight yards on the play, second down two. There's a handoff. No, now a keeper here. Braylon around the left side. Nice block by Colley, and it's going to be a first down Dameron on the as Dameron keeper. takes it down, down inside the 10 or right at the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal now. Vikings looking really good on this opening drive. 9.42 to play in the first quarter. Play first and goal from the 10 for Benton County. <clears throat> Vikings in their wing T formation, two wide, one to each side. Car in motion, and the handoff is up the middle to Moore, who powers his way down to the six-yard line, a gain of four. 
the carry for Benton County taken down by Sky Moore for Cooksville. Second and goal now. Looks like they spot the ball at the seven. Up three yards. It'll be second and goal. 903 to go on a rolling clock. First quarter here from Vinton County High School. Dameron takes the snap, throws the screen. That's to River Hayes, and he makes one man miss before being brought down at the one yard line. River Hayes is and brought down by number 28, Austin down Love. Cottrell. And Cottrell on the play. You're going to hear his name a lot at quarterback and on the defensive side of the ball. Cottrell, a junior this season, so he'll be back again next year. Starting goal from the two. Ball spotted now back at the two-yard line. Collie in motion, takes the snap. Dameron takes the snap, hands to Collie, gets maybe a half yard on the play there. Crooksville front did a good job on that play. 8-10 to go, first quarter. Going to bring up fourth down now and two from, well, fourth down and goal from the two-yard line. Fourth and goal from the two. Vikings line up two wide. Crooksville playing up. And there's a handoff up the middle. I think more, a little miscommunication on the play there. Going to be stopped short of the goal line. So Crooksville holds. Brockmore allows the Vikings to pick up nine and a half yards on that set of downs, but not enough. 7.48 to go in the first quarter. And the Vikings turn it over on down. As now Crooksville will be the half yard line. Not a good place to start a drive. See what the ceramics decide to do here. Maybe see a quarterback keeper just to try to get some room here. You see the quick handoff. Looks like maybe a gain of a yard, half a yard on the play. Brings up second down. Noah Dickerson on the carry. Taken down by Blake Brown. And Trayton White for Vinton County. No gain on the play. Second down, 10. Dickerson in the backfield by Cottrell in the shotgun. There's a handoff to Dickerson again, and he breaks free this time, gaining about seven yards up the middle. Dickerson, the ball carrier. It's like he was finally brought down by Caden Collins on the play. Take it down by Dawson Brown and Caden Collins from Benton County. Well, that gave him some breathing room here, but it's a Big third down here, third down in uh, short five. 6.40 to go in the first quarter. Vikings can hold here. It'll bring up an obvious punting situation for Crooksville. Trenton Cottrell at quarterback. And we've got a flag on the play. And it looks like it's going to be offsides encroachment on Vinton County. That's going to give Offside. Crooksville a free first down. 6.24 to go. That's not what you want to see. We didn't see many penalties last week in the Vikings' win against Unioto. Ball now resting on the 12-yard line. First and 10 ceramics. Caught from the backfield with Dickerson to his left. You got four wide receivers. And there's a handoff here up the middle by Dickerson. Looks Dickerson like he gets about carrier. another six yards on the play. Taken down by Dawson Brown for Benton County. It'll be second down and five here. 5.53 to go in quarter number one. Crooksville with the ball here. Third down, second down and five. Like they're sticking with the spread formation. Saw a lot of this last week in their loss against Waterford. Four wide again, trips to the near side. And there's another, this is a keeper here. And he gets the corner. Not much else as he gets 
brought down about a yard shy, I think, of the first down. Zayden Carr on the tackle for Benton County. Cockrell tried to pick that up. Brought this time a single. Here we go. In motion number 10. There's the sweep. And the Vinton County Vikings snuff that one out. Big play there by Blake Brown as he was on the one of the first in there. Taken down by a host of Vinton County Vikings. Sprankle again, which uh, I don't think we were, uh, I don't think the audio is up uh, in the pregame, but Sprankle wearing number 10. He normally wears number two, and that is to uh, honor a coach that actually passed away not too long ago for Crooksville. So they're, uh, each game this year, somebody wears that jersey in honor of, of that fallen coach. So that's kind of a, a nice tribute there. Loss of one on that play there. We go again. Cottrell looking to pass. Throws again to Sprankle, and he's met quickly by Zane Carr and brought down after a pickup of about five yards on the play. 3.54 to go in the first quarter. Going to bring up another big third down here on this drive. Third down and six. Cottrell again will line up in the shotgun, flanked by Dickerson, his tailback. Sprankle coming in motion, and that looked like, yes, it was, false start. You can, you can get a running start in arena football, but you can't do it in high school football. 3.18 to go. Clock's now stopped. It'll bring up third down and 11. Both teams with a costly early game penalty. Let's see if they decide to run that same play or if they switch it up here. We have four wide. Looks like we're going to run the pistol formation this time. Cottrell takes the high snap, looking to throw. Sets up the screen, and it's met instantly by Brock Moore. What a play. What a play by the senior. He saw that coming right away. And was about a half a step from a pick six there. 2.59 to go. Fourth down and 11 now for Crooksville. Big time play by Brock Moore. So Crooksville will be forced to punt. Dickerson and punt formation for the ceramics. Back deep same car for Vinton County. It'll be Vinton County second time on offense. The first time they drove down to the one-yard line before turning it over on downs. Crooksville, the second time on offense. First time interception, this time a punt. Here's the punt now. Car back deep, going to let it bounce. And takes about a, a little bit of a Crooksville roll. Going to be down at the 35-yard line of Vic County. 2.48 to go in the first quarter. First and 10. From their own 35-yard line. Two minutes and 48 seconds remaining in the first quarter. We're going to have a timeout for a water break. It is rather warm here today. Also want to get a, give a shout-out to Mr. Manring. He's helping us on the uh, camera. Doing a great job. So Vinton County started the season 1-0 for the first time since 2013. Looking to keep things rolling today against Crooksville uh, before traveling to Trimble next week and then to Megs the following week. Now we will be back to bring you action in three weeks when we come back home to take on Athens and what will actually be senior night here at Vent County High School. That's something that uh, that they've decided to, to move up just to make sure we can get it in. We also I want to say thank you to our sponsors that you see on the 
upper right hand corner there we've got Spring Street Sports, Ramey's Mobile Homes, and then also Adina is the exclusive medical provider for BMG Media. So thank you to all three of those partners. As we start back here with Vinton County on offense, Collie in motion. The handoff is to Collie. Up the middle, brought down by a couple linemen there. It's like 66 on the tackle. Dylan Dutro. Pickup of three yards on the play by Collie. Pick up a three yards. It'll be second and seven for Benton County. Ball of their own 38. Collie again in motion this time. The pitch. Big block by Brock Moore, but brought down on the play by Corbin Browning for Crooksville after a gain of two by Collie. It's going to bring up a third down and five from the 35 from the 40 yard line. 153 to go in the first quarter. Scoreless game. Take about two yards. Third down, five. This time, car in motion. Same play, opposite side. Car slips a tackle. And looks like he made it back to the line of scrimmage, brought down by. Like number 74. Four. Chapman and Moore for Lynchville. It'll be fourth down among five. 74 Rollins and then 77 Sky Moore on the tackle. Going to bring up a fourth down here for Vinton County. And, for Vinton County. and they'll be forced to punt with a minute and 13 to go in the first quarter. Low and sprinkle deep. Zero to zero the score. Ratchke back to punt. Low snap picked up by Ratchke. Good job. And the punt is a low wobbler, and it bounces, takes a vit, big Vinton County bounce all the way down inside the 15-yard line to the 13. What a roll there by Ratchke on the punt. It's a 40, looks like a 46-yard punt there. That's a nice way to start the game out for a punter. After the 47-yard punt. <coughs> 53 seconds to go in the first quarter here from Vitt County High School. Ball will be on their own 14-yard line. Crooksville again starting uh, deep in their own territory. Last drive started at the one-yard line. This drive starting at the 14 in the pistol formation. The handoff is to Sprankle, and he's got some room. Makes two men miss and finally brought down by River Hayes after a nice big game there out to the 34-yard line. Ethan Sprankle. Biggest play of the game by either team offensively. 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Crooksville they don't huddle, but they don't really they don't really get to the line quickly either. They uh, they're in so, kind of a slow offense for a spread offense. And there's the handoff. Nope, it's a keeper up the middle. Looks like looks like a gain of about three by Cottrell there. Clock continues to roll with five seconds. That's going to end the first quarter. After one quarter play, it's Vitt County and Crooksville tied up at zero here from Vitt County High School. At this point, Vikings no score, Crooksville no score. Thank you. 
All right, Crooksville will start the second quarter with a second down and seven on the 36-yard line. In the pistol formation, Cottrell hands it off. Sprankle looking for the corner and does not get it. Brought down by number 24, Byron Brisker on the tackle there. Be a gain of a half a yard on the play. And looking for the for the edge there, and Brisker quickly there to cut him off. Nice tackle there. Brings up another big third down here for the Ceramics. Third down and seven from the 37-yard line. Second quarter action just under play. Just underway. 11.23 to go in the second quarter. Crooksville again taking their time. They're down to five seconds on the clock, on the play clock. They're not going to get this off. Two, one, and that's a five-yard penalty on Crooksville for delayed game. Timeout. <clears throat> ah, no, they call a timeout. So they got one in there. That saves five yards. It'll still be third down and seven after the timeout. That'll be Crooksville's first timeout of the half. They'll have two remaining. 11-11 on the clock in the second quarter. Game tied at zero. Second home game of the year, second Rather large crowd here at Benton County High School. We've got uh, people down along the fence. Bleachers about 80% full. There's a big crowd up at Viking Corner. You know John John McGee from Spring Street Sports, one of our sponsors, has got the big Viking Nation sign. Got the tent up. I know he's cooking some good food. We actually had some uh, some of his world famous sliders before the broadcast tonight. Here we go with a big third down by Crooksville here. Third and seven. Cottrell again in the pistol formation. Sprankle. There's a pressure. The pass is to Sprankle. They're trying to get around Carr and he does not. He's brought down by Carr and Hayes. Uh, right at the line of scrimmage, so no gain on the play. It's going to bring up a fourth down. Nice job by Carr getting off that block. Able to spread it out, and it gave Hayes enough time to come up and make that help make that tackle. 10.45 now. It's going to be fourth down for Crooksville. Be forced to punt here. Dickerson, the running back and punter for Crooksville. Not a real deep team. So we'll hear a lot of the same names. And there's a punt, or a snap that was low. Gets the punt off. Nice punt. And Carr with it at the 19. Trying to get around the right side. And there's a flag on the play. Two flags now. One on the far side and this one on the near. As Carr is brought down at the 36. Could be penalties on both teams they here. The run back. We have flat, multiple flags on the field. It's like a block in the back on Vinton County. And I'm not sure if it was a face mask or what over here on this side, on the near side. <clears throat> we'll see. Referees huddling together. Again, I'm certain of a block in the back on Vinton County on the far side, and then this side here could be on the ceramics. We'll have to wait. We go block in the back against the return team. That penalty's declined, so that tells me. All right, that's a helmet to helmet hit. Nonetheless, it's on Vinton County. Be a 15-yard penalty. Maybe that was blindside hit. Called blindside hit. So mark them back 15 yards. It'll be first and 10 where Carr caught the punt. Right around the 20-yard line. 10.09 to go in the first quarter. Dameron under center hands the ball off. 
straight up the middle was Brisker there. About a half a yard, maybe a yard on the on the play. Taken down by second down and nine for the Vikings from the twenty-one. Second down and nine. Dameron takes the snap, drops back, looks to pass. Looking for number three. Caught and knocked out of bounds is Dawson Brown on the play. And that'll be good enough for a first down. Out to the 33-yard line. And I uh, 9.25 to go in the, in the second quarter. Brad, you're hey, I'm here. You're here? I made it. Uh, Brad finally makes it up here from the from the football helmet and tunnel. I mentioned to everyone earlier that you were down there with that. I apologize I, for that, mate. I can, I can tell that you're out of breath. I'm a little out of breath. You are. So it's been a, it's been a defensive battle so far. There's a handoff oh, no. fumble on the play. It's like recovered by Dameron. Fumble in the backfield, recovered by Dameron. That'll bring up a big third down and 10 here. It's been a defensive game so far, Brad. Uh, it has. You had Woltz with the interception there early. Yeah, that was uh, a nice play. We, we, we talked last week uh, on the on the Red Zone show about how he wanted to, to break records on the defensive side of the ball. He's well on his way. This is the way to start the season right here, Nate. Yes. Dameron takes the snap. Looking, looking. Throws now. Out of bounds. Smart play there. Carr was double covered. And the rush was coming. That's a veteran play by a quarterback right there. Just get it rid is. of the ball. Fourth year starter. I mean, he knows what he needs to do. Throw the ball away there. Wasn't uh, wasn't a whole lot available there. Right. 8-32. Again, this drive started with a penalty on the punt. Now it's third down. I, I don't know if I said fourth down or what there. I thought it was fourth. That's third down and ten. Here we go. Calling in motion. And here's oh, nice. the counter to Carr. And he's still he's running. And he's still going across the 45. He picks up the first down and had about ten yards after the carry of contact on that play. 8.23 to go. Great what blocking. a play. Great blocking up front, Nathan. Uh, he, it sprung him to about the 40-yard line, Brad, but he picked up the last he, seven yards on his own. He did. That was all will. The big boys downstairs, down inside, they, they're the ones that made that hole for us. Nice pick up there on that counter play. First time I think we've seen that this year. That's a big-time play and a big-time a big time situation there as the handoff goes to Moore, and he's met by big 50 there. He refused to go down, though. Bradley Ray. Yeah, Brock, I tell you, he's he's a bruiser, man. So no gain on the play. First contact made by Bradley Ray of Brooksville. No gain on the play. Pretty good crowd here tonight, Nathan. Yeah, I mentioned that. Uh, nice nice crowd here in the stands. We've got people on the fence line as impressively hot as it is and all the ways you can watch this game now. Uh Mentioned uh, John up in Viking Corner with the signs out there. We got a nice crowd of tailgaters on the hillside. Tailgate's pretty deep tonight. I see that, and uh, also the fireworks are back again. I noticed that when the boys came running. How out. exciting is that? That's that's awesome. We love it. Again, Nathan Lamb here alongside Brad Rose from Vinton County High School, bringing you Vinton County and Crooksville action. And Dameron now pitches the ball to Collie. He cuts it up. Nice hole again. Pickup of about four yards on the play. Taken down by Trenton Cottrell. Looked like 84 was in on and that one. Browning. Corbin Browning. Corbin Browning. I've said his name a couple times. Pick up four yards on the play. It'll be third down six. Another big third down here. Let's see if Vitt County can convert another third down and long on this drive. Dameron under center. Handoff is to Moore up the middle. Didn't really fool anybody on that one as uh, Carr came in motion. Moore picks up about a yard. Now, what are you thinking here? Did you call that play because you're thinking two downs? or uh, I think it's two down territory. You're, you're, you're at midfield. Uh, no reason to punt the ball here. Uh, I think you run, and if you get the first and you move on, if not, then 
And we did have a nice we did have a nice punt by Ratchke, the the first punt of the game, forty seven yards. I don't know if you heard that over no, the loud. I didn't hear that. That's, that's a nice that's punt. Beautiful punt. Forty seven yards from here, you're at the one yard line basically. So Vikings look to be going for it. Dameron under center more in the backfield. Now they could be trying to draw them off sides. Oh, they're gonna go for it. Here we go. Carr rolling to the right. Looks downfield. Looks for Carr. Throws. Got it. And it's caught nice. by River Hayes for the first down. And we saw that play last week in the fourth quarter. River where Hayes runs to the edge. Comes out to the sidelines there and picks his spot, turns around, gives him a real nice target. That was a very nice pitch and catch right there. As we have a Crooksville player down. So we'll take a, a brief time out here, but we'll talk about that play. Big time play, another third down where we com convert on a third and long on this drive. In a defensive battle like this, those those two or three times you're going to see that happen throughout a game, that's what's going to win you a ball game. It is. I mean, you've got to be able to move the ball in those kind of situations. And actually, so far tonight, we've done that on a couple of occasions. Yes, and we've, did it, we've, done, we've, we've done it once on the ground and then now through the air. Nice mix of run and pass so far by Vinton County. Yeah, uh, Coach Wall and, and Coach Carper really got the offense kind of looking a little different tonight, Nate. Yeah, with the uh, <clears throat> obviously down on the goal line here on the first drive, uh, you really feel like we let one go there, uh, or else we could be looking at a at a one score, possibly driving down to take a two score lead here late in the in the second quarter as it's six thirteen uh, remaining in this second quarter. Uh, honestly, through six quarters of this 2021 season, the defense has looked pretty good so far, Nathan. Uh, yeah, so six quarters, and they've only been scored on once yes. uh, in one quarter, one time, on a 24-yard leaker down the down the sideline. Couldn't ask for against Uniota, yeah. Couldn't ask for a whole lot better. I think uh, three interceptions on the season so far, which we'll have stats coming to you halftime after the uh, first half of play uh, as our – Crooksville player that was down is is up, and he's going to head off to the sideline. It's number 74, Andrew Rollins. Hopefully it's nothing serious there. Looks like he's favoring the leg a little. A little bit. He's up on his feet, though. He's, he's a big lad. Yes, he is. It's going to be a big body to replace. Uh, as we move on here in the second quarter, uh, we want to, again, thank our sponsor, Spring Street Sports. Uh, we've got Ramey's Mobile Homes that we want to thank. Uh, we know John and the guys out there, they always give back, uh, and as well as John from Spring Street. Um, and also Adina, the exclusive uh, medical partner of BMG. We thank all of our sponsors. Clock begins to roll, 6-10. First down and 10, Vitton County. Dameron under center. Moore in the backfield. Dameron now looks to throw to Carr, and it's a oh. short throw. Falls incomplete. Dameron's pass intended for Carr. He threw it outside low. The only place that Carr, you know, Carr was the only one that's going to be able to get to that one. Yeah, that's, that's a safe area to put it. Obviously, you know, you're, you're running straight to the sidelines. So it's hard to lead, lead it downfield that way. But uh, you don't see Dameron throw too many too many balls in the dirt these days, man. You don't? That's something that uh, one of our greats, Naylon Yates, you know, he was going to put the ball low and outside where nobody could get to it. There's that counter play again. This time Carr gets nine yards on the play. Another good run by Carr. Sets up a real easy third down. Ken Sprankle on the tackle and uh, third down and two here as the clock continues to roll. 5.37 to go in the second quarter. A scoreless game here from Benton County High School. Tamron again under center. Moore in the backfield with Colley in motion. And the handoff. No, it's a keeper. Maybe a busted play there. Is it's going to be close. Dameron, on the Dameron gets about a yard, maybe a yard and a half. It's going to bring up a fourth down. They may measure here, but it looks about a half a yard shy. Fourth down. Less than a yard. Five minutes even now. Twenty-eight yard line. You got more right there in the backfield. It might be a good time to just feed him. We'll see. They got quite a few in the box, Nathan. You got two wide. 
Car in motion. It's a handoff to Carr. He gets two, breaks two tackles. Keep turning. And he's still Keep on his turning. feet across the 20 down to the 18. Still going across the 15. My goodness, this wow. kid is a beast. I don't know who to say tackled him because I think everybody touched him. 4.38 to go. Benton County with a first and 10 from the 16-yard line. And again, yards after contact. My goodness, that was... That was 10 yards. It absolutely was. He broke two tackles and then carried two, three, four more kids before they finally brought him down. I'd say more than half the team touched him <laughs> on, that, on that run. What was I saying? Give the ball to Moore. Give the ball to hey. Carr on that play. Either or. We'll take them both. Here we got a uh, stoppage. Looks like a timeout by Crooksville. That's the second of the half for the Crooksville Ceramics with 420 to go in the first half here from Vitton County High School. The score is 0-0. Zero to zero. Bradley, the sun is starting to set. It's it not is. as hot. It's not. It's a little cooler. We got a little uh, cloud coverage over there to the uh, west. Cast a little shadow here. It's, it's starting to be reasonable outside yes. now, Nathan. Reasonable. Once again, our thanks to Holzer Health System for providing our athletic trainer through Ohio University. You can get back in action. Dr. Kelly Rausch and the staff of Saturday. And we want to we want to thank uh, BMG Media uh, for allowing us to do this. Partner up with them from the bike, uh, obviously us from the Viking Red Zone. Uh, we want to thank Michael Gray. Um, we want to thank our sponsors again: Spring Street Sports, or Amy's Mobile Homes, and Adina Healthcare. As we are live here from MacArthur, in a zero-zero tie with 4:20 to go in the first quarter. Uh, Amanda Clear Creek, 14-3 to up on Unioto in the first quarter. That's a little closer score than I expected. Uh, Galley up on Athens, 14 to nothing in the second quarter. As we'll try to keep an eye on some of these scores from around the TVC and around the area throughout the broadcast tonight. Dameron, first down and 10. And it's a keeper and a pitch oh. to Colley. Colley makes one man miss. Makes two men miss, but oh. fumbles the ball. Oh. I don't know. I think his knees were down, Nathan. Looked knees, like looked like he might have been down, but I they're going to say, down. let's see here. Uh, we got one saying the ball was down. The other the other ref saying he's spotting Boy, it where the fumble was. It looked like the the, the last stretch. I think so. I, the I, ball came free. It did, but I think his knees were on the ground. As I stretched. agree with you. I think I believe both knees were down. They're going to say second down. So I believe they got that call right. No fumble on the play. So it's going to be a pickup of four. Kind of a kind of a uh, risky play there. You had you had a pitch to Collie with with literally he know you know he has to beat one man there on the edge. Now he did that, uh, but in trying to reach for that extra yards, the ball came out. Just just an aggressive play, and sometimes that happens. Yeah, four oh two to go in the first quarter or first half, and here's a handoff. Nice run up the. Right side. That was Rashke. Another one of our plethora of running backs here at County High School. They just keep rotating them in, don't they? We've had Rashke. We've had uh, Brisker. Obviously, the big guys with, with Carr and Collie and Moore. They've all got a carry or multiple carries. This sets up a third and four from the 10-yard line. 3.54 to go in the first half. Vikings again in their wing tee. Two wide. Car in motion. The handoff is to Car, and he cuts up across the five-yard line. Picks up a first down. It'll be sec. It'll be first and goal for the second time now tonight. Here we go. Can we punch it in? We were first and goal at uh, the ten-yard line in the first quarter, and it's first and goal from the five-yard line now here late in the second quarter. Three eighteen to go on a rolling clock. Brisker coming in the game for more. Do you pass here, Brad? Try no, something Nate. new. I, I think we stick to stick the Stick to what you got. It's what working. got you here, right? Yeah, it's working so far. Okay, Dameron under center. The there handoff to Collie. Collie cuts nice. it back across the goal line, and he's in for the score. A five-yard touchdown by Collie. And that puts Vinton County on the board for the first time tonight with 2.57 to go. And there's the there fireworks. There we go. That's what we want to see. Nice drive by, by the Vid County Vikings there to take the lead before half. Up the extra point. Out of Byron Brisker's hole. And the snaps back. Ball's down. Kick is up. And the kick is good. good. 
Our first one of the season, Nathan. All right. Nice kick. Josiah Thacker. That was Thacker on the kick right there, wasn't it? It was. That was a great kick. Looked like uh, it. Watched him warming up earlier. He, he, he put, booted a few through uh, during warm-ups. Well, we may have found the kicker for the rest of the season. I, I hope so. We were uh, 0 for, well, 0 for 1 last week. Went for 2 on the second touchdown. So, 50% uh, on extra points right now, on extra point kicks this season. Well, you know, we were spoiled for many years. Well, we were for, for quite a few years with uh, one of the all-time great Eli Downs. Uh, kicking here holds just about every record. I think every record except for the longest field goal, which is held by Kevin Cottle. I think it's 43 yards. But he's, he's a pretty big human being. He had a heck of a leg. I'm sure he could kick a lot of things 43 yards. <laughs> the Vikings score with 2.57 to go in the second quarter and take a 7 to nothing lead here against the Crooksville Ceramics. We again, thank you for joining us tonight. Nathan Lamb here alongside my partner, Brad Rose. From the Vic County High School, high atop the press box here. So Rashke will do the kicking duties here kick off for the Vikings. For Ryan Moore and Sprankle are deep with Noah Dickerson for Crooksville. And this one's deep. It's going to go to Sprankle at the 21-yard line. He takes it, looking for a hole, and he finds one. Gets across the 35, and that's a fumble. Ball, ball on the ground. Looks like the Vikings say they have it. Let's see who has it. Oh, this could be big. And it is. Nothing yet. It is. Viking football. There you go. Sprankle. Looks like Dawson Brown, Brown came three. out with the ball. Sprankle. Very frustrated with himself. Was a good return. Was a good return. He, he, he didn't find a hole, but he made a hole. Looked like one of those Vikings raked the ball out as they were kind of muddled together there. And uh, Brown picks it up, or at least comes out of the pile with it. Great opportunity for us to ski, steal a score right here. Before Absolutely. The and Vinton County will we'll get the kick, uh, the kickoff in the second half. So you could go back to back to back here uh, if things work out. 2.47 to go in the second quarter. Been counting up 7 nothing. Here is a flag. It looks like a false start on Vinton County. Yes, sir. It's not a way you want to start a drive. It's kind of a bit of a, false bit of stall drive. Yeah. That's, that's, that's for sure. Uh... First and 15, Nathan. First down, 15. First and 15. All on the 41-yard line. Dameron with Brisker in the backfield. Three wide receivers. There we go. Looks like he's looking for Hayes and Scott Hayes. Looks he throws good. this side Turn to Carr, and Carr goes up. Oh. Almost with the grab. Hayes was wide open across the middle. I initially thought he was going to him. I think he looked at it. That's probably his first choice and, and, and saw him at Zane at the last second. So Zane still nearly comes down with that ball. Now, that's that's a good play. I, I like that play call there by uh, by Coach Wall, uh, the offensive coordinator. I like that play. It's first down, 15 to go. You're on the 40. You got the momentum. It's, it's late in the first half. Try to take you one deep there. Yeah, why not take a chance? Dameron this time Rasky in motion the handoff on the counter to Carr Carr's got some space can he get the corner he does get the corner and across the 30 to the 30 to the 29 yard line Carr again man he can once he gets a little space it takes a, it takes quite a few guys to bring him down <laughs> and that sets up a manageable third down and three and obviously four down territory here with two minutes to go in the in the first half oh, I think you got if you don't get the first down on this run, I think you run again. Yeah, you've got two plays here to pick up the first. It's third and three. Vikings in the wing tee, two wide outs. Rashke in motion. The handoff to Rashke. He's got a hole. Hit Gets hit by number 20. First down. Looks like he got the first down. Brought down by Chapman on the play there. But not after a first down. So here we go. Three timeouts remaining for Vitt County. The clock will stop on a first down. Until the chains are set. They may want to measure. No, they're not going to measure. Yeah, no. first down. Okay, 152 to go. In the first half, the ball at the 26-yard line, 25-yard line. 
Vikings up to the line quickly. Not going to call a timeout here. Moore in the backfield. Vikings with two wide outs. Dameron drops back, and there's another whistle. And now we call a timeout. <laughs> Obviously didn't like something there. No. Didn't like something there. That's not bad. We've still got two timeouts remaining. 1.43 to go in the first half. Been counting up 7 to nothing. It's first and 10 on the 25-yard line. Again, we want to thank our sponsors, Ramey's Mobile Homes, with two locations in Allensville, which they, they say MacArthur on the ad. Hey. But that's right on the it's right on the edge of Allensville, right? It is. It so is. So you've got you've got Ramey's out there in Allensville and also uh, just south of Chillicothe on US Route twenty three. Uh, we thank we thank the Ramey's uh, for teaming up with us. Spring Street Sports and John, I tell you, I had three of those sliders before the game started. We had a runner, man. We had a runner. You were late. I, I'm sorry. I I'm not up here. I'm sorry. You don't even save me one, Nathan? <laughs> well, I had intentions on saving yes, you one. Yes, I hear you. But you know how good they are. Uh, they so are great. And I didn't get one this time. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all right. I'll, I'll make sure I secure one for I'll, you next game. I'll let it slide. <laughs> but we thank John from Spring Street Sports. Always support Benton County Athletics. Here we go, first and ten. Dameron looks to pass. Gets flushed, mm. flushed out of the oh. pocket. Drops the ball, ah. and it's picked up by Crooksville. Number 50, Bradley Ray on the recovery. It's an unfortunate play there by Benton County. And now if you're... If you're TJ Carper, do you throw the challenge flag and try to get the tuck rule on that? <laughs> hey. I mean, that's essentially the same thing, right? It is. It is. But, I mean, it's time to buckle down now. Play some defense. 137 uh, to go, yes. You got you got the interception machine out here um, in Wolts. Yep. Maybe he can do something special for us and grab his third pick of this early season. Well, if you're Crooksville, do you, do you try to push it here? Uh, or do you just say, hey, 137 to go, we'll run our offense, and whatever happens, happens. I think you run your offense. There's a uh, there. fake swing Ooh. pass there and brought down nice. in the backfield. Nice. Number six, uh, that looks like that was Blake Brown on the tackle. Taken down in the backfield by Blake Brown. Big time sack there. Now that might put a dagger in what they had right. tried to do on offense there as we get down to a minute, 12 seconds to go as I have papers flying everywhere on top of the press box here. It will be second down and 17 from the 27-yard line. Yeah, I believe they've seeded here. They've kind of One timeout left, yes. And that's another thing, Crooksville's offense. They've run a spread, uh, no huddle spread, but they take a lot of time. They're, they're not a quick no huddle spread. So here we go in the pistol, and there it is, the handoff, the safe play up the middle. And it's like Dickerson got about five four yards on the four yards on the play i think the third down and 13 third down and 14 on the about three yards yeah third and 13 on the board there looks like 14 13 28 seconds to go here 19 on the clock on the play clock so this should be the last play of the first half do you try anything or do you just take a knee no, I, I, you got to go for it. What are you going to lose here? I, I take a knee if I'm Crooksville. Let's go to halftime down seven. There we go. We're going Cockrell deep. hands yep. it off. Dickerson. Right. Brown. Oh, and a big hit there by number 88. Ashton. Ashton Holman. Brown stands him up, and Ashton takes him down. Nice job there by the defenses. That's going to end the first quarter or first half of play here for Mid County High School. Where Benton County leads Crooksville in the Ceramics 7 to 0. Crooksville Ceramics, no score. Another defensive battle, Brad. I mean, we're setting the tone for the season here. Uh, we're going to need it next week uh, when we visit Trimble. So you get your defense on track. Like these two games, somehow we get out of here with single digit scores given up. Uh, that bodes well for us heading into Trimble week. Yeah, I agree. Trimble is a team that, that plays great defense. They're a team that you know we're going to see next week for the first time since 1994. Uh, we've, we've not played them in that long. I mean, these kids on both teams weren't even alive the last time these two teams met, even though we are in separate divisions at the TBC. 
Uh, defensively, though, yes, uh, I would much rather see the defense playing well than the offense playing well and the defense not, because I think that's what you're going to need when you go to Gloucester Memorial Stadium next week. But we still have a half to finish here against Crooksville. Um, how do you, you know, if you're Coach Carper, you made some good adjustments last week. You came into halftime last week down by one, seven to six. You wound up winning the game 12 to seven on a. Uh, game clinching yeah. uh, play, last second board. play uh, in the end zone with the interception by River Hayes. Um, what is it the same uh, the same speech this week, guys? Like, uh, let's keep the defense going here. Yeah, I mean, uh, nothing to be concerned about. This has been kind of our style of ball so far this season. Um, I, I'd say you stay the course, and he probably tells the boys there's probably some things he's unhappy about. And there's probably a few things that he's seen today that that. Uh, you know, he likes, but I, I'm sure he's going to go in there and, and, and talk about some offensive struggles we've had and giving up the ball, which is a little concerning, you know, they're late. But. Yeah, that's uh, – that's, I don't think – we had a fumble last week, but it wasn't lost. This time we have one. We actually have two fumbles, uh, and, and we lose one of those. Um, and an unforced fumble. Those are the worst kind you can have there. It's not like you get popped and, and, and you know, the ball squirts out. But an unforced fumble there um, really kind of derailed what momentum we had going into the half. Uh, again, we could easily, without any mistakes, be up 21 to nothing right now. We could. We could. If we could have finished out that drive and then stalling down here inside the 10 yeah. uh, early in the first quarter. We're on the one-yard line. Was it on the one? Yeah, we yeah, were tackling the opposite the one line. I know it was inside the inside the ten. Yeah. I wasn't sure. Yep. Okay, so uh, as we wait on the stats, I know Lugs is going to send us some first half stats that we'll read here. Um, I want to read over some scores, early first half scores from tonight around Southeast Ohio. Amanda Clear Creek, fourteen. Unioto three. Alexander and South Point are tied at zero. Circleville is beating Southeastern seven to zero. Fairland and Oak Hill are tied at zero. Fairfield Union and Heath are uh, Fairfield Union's up on Heath fourteen to twelve. Ironton and Jackson were zero zero. Megs twenty eight. Belpre twelve. Talk about Coulter Cleveland and that Megs offense. It looks like they found their groove. Might very well be. I'm good. Uh, Piketon and Wellston tied at zero. River Valley South Gallia. That game is actually tomorrow night. Uh, they, night. they moved it to a Saturday night game. Looks like we've got, yeah, looks like we've got, uh, so we've got some word from some of our Western uh, games that there's some weather moving this way. Uh, as we look back behind us here at the high school towards the Western skies, there seems to be some storms coming. Uh, so we'll see just how quickly they get here um, as we may be in for a long haul in this second half as uh, weather could be coming in. So I've got the stats here from Lugs. Uh, we'll start start with the uh, Crooksville Ceramics uh, rushing. Noah Dickerson. Uh, he's got 15 yards rushing tonight in the first half so far with a long of six yards. Uh, Cottrell has eight yards in the first half. Uh, long is five yards, and Sprankle has uh, two rushes for no gain. Uh, as he had one decent rush and then one uh, where he was tackled behind the line for a loss. Uh, passing for Crooksville, Cottrell is two of three for six yards with an interception, and he's been sacked once. Or no, Cottrell didn't throw the pick. That was Dickerson that threw that pick uh, into to Brady Woltz in the first half. So with Cottrell and Dickerson both, it's uh, they're, they're two for four passing with one interception uh, for six total yards and one sack. Receiving Sprankle has two for six yards, and that's it. Wow. Uh, for Vinton County, Zane Carr. We're going to like this because last week it was kind of the opposite. Unieta was winning the stat game uh, at the half. Zane Carr a rushing seven carries, 59 yards. A long of 14, he's averaging 8.4 yards a carry. <laughs> it's not a bad average. No. Cody Colley, seven carries for 21 yards uh, with a touchdown. His long was five, but his average is 3.0, so that tells me that he's getting forward progress when he gets the ball. Gabe Brasky, two rushes for seven yards. Uh, Brock Moore, five rushes for five yards. 
I think all five of those were on like third down and one. Uh, he's your bruiser back. Brisker's got a rush for a yard. And uh, Braylon four for eight in this first half. 101 yards rushing on 26 carries for Vinton County. That's an average of 3.5 yards a carry. You do that, you can't lose. No, no. Always um, get 10. The rushing stats for Crooksville, 10 carries, 23 yards in the first half. Uh, River Hayes receiving for Vinton County has two catches for 17 yards, and Dawson Brown has one catch for 12 yards. Grayland Dam Dameron is four of seven for uh, 37 yards. He's been sacked one time. Uh, team stats, Vinton County has seven first downs to Crooksville's two. A rushing yards, 26 carries for 92 yards for Vinton County, 10 carries for 14 yards for Crooksville. Hey. Defensively, defensively, it's unbelievable. Passing yards for Vinton County, 37 uh, on seven, four of seven passing. Uh, Crooksville on two of four passing with one pick. They have six yards passing for a total of 20 offensive yards in the first half. How big is that? That is amazing. And, and seeing the game, I never would have guessed 20 yards. You know, I, I we knew it was low, but it just didn't feel like a 20-yard offensive output type of game. Yes. Uh, penalties, Vinton County, three for 27 yards. Crooksville only one for five yards. Vinton County with two fumbles, one lost. Crooksville with a fumble that was lost. Also, Crooksville with an interception. And Vinton County, no interceptions in the first half. Third down efficiency. Vinton County was four for nine. And two for three on fourth down. Crooksville, 0 for three on third down and 0 for 0 on fourth down. They did not go for it on fourth down. So defensively, you can't play any better no, than I mean, that. The first six quarters, like we talked about, man, it, you couldn't have asked for a better six quarters starting off the 2021 season than, than what has occurred. Yeah, it's definitely been... Uh, been very well played by the defensive side of the ball here from the Vikings. And if you've listened to the Viking Red Zone uh, prior to the season, we did our preseason show. That was one thing that concerned us was the defense, and not just the defense, but up front and then the secondary. And if you had to pick a part of the defense that's played the best, what would that be in your opinion, Brad? I mean, the secondary has been amazing so far to me. And the line, there's some kids playing on the line that have surprised me. The DNs and uh, Reagan Newsom, just a few. Blake Blake Brown. And yeah, Newsom, um, Newsom had a big sack last week uh, in the game against Unieto. But honestly, to me, the most surprising are your corners, your safety, your, your DBs in general. Um, we were a little bit afraid of what we were going to have, um, and we knew we were going to be going into that week one with Yunyota, who we thought was a real uh, power as far as passing, and they did not show that to us. Yeah, and that's something that uh, that a lot of people were questioning. Was Yunyota down because Vinton County won the game, or was, was that just uh, an improved Vinton County team playing a really good Yunyota team? And, and defensively for both teams. Let's not cut any, you know, cut anything away from Unieta. They played great defense too. And the same goes for Crooksville today. Uh, obviously, we've, we're over 100 total yards, uh, many of those on the ground rushing. But at the end of the day, they're in the locker room sitting there saying the game is seven to nothing. So they've got just as much chance in this one as we do. So you got to be, got to be satisfied if you're Crooksville with the defense that they've been able to play. It's just try to pick things up on offense, which we saw. Uh, last week against Waterford was was difficult for them. They had one scoring drive. They were able to move the ball some, uh, but there were just some mistakes, some fumbles, some interceptions. Uh, you know that that uh, kind of created that gap, that twenty-seven to seven score against Waterford, which is a decent team, by the way. Waterford is uh, you know, probably a top three team in the TBC Hawking. So um, you got to be you got to be satisfied. I'm extremely satisfied. Uh, like I said, 20 yards of offense, that's what you're holding. Uh, uh, a team that's in a really good conference, it is a smaller school team, a D, what are they, D5, D6? I think they're D6, yes. Um, still, there's there's the defenses look good, very good. Uh, whether or not Crooksville struggle a little bit, we know they probably are some, but the defenses looked excellent. And a lot of these uh, younger kids or younger guys that hasn't saw the field a whole bunch is on varsity is – are providing some really uh, substantial minutes in some pretty good, you know, plays. All right, so at this time, uh, we're going to put the mics down and we're going to let uh, everybody out there listen to the Lincoln County High School 
marching band here for the next few minutes. We'll be back for third quarter action after the band. The 2021 Benton County Marching Vikings! Tonight, the Marching Vikings kick off the season by celebrating their upcoming performance at Disney World this coming April. Sit back and relax as you listen to this mashup of the Mickey Mouse March, It's a Small World, and Zippity Doodah. Featuring the Marching Vikings Color Guard, we invite you to become part of our world in this tale as old as time, Disney Princess Milkley. I don't think I would not keep my equipment from getting wet. I didn't pay you a year ago. Yeah. 
If I got to, I'll just take the camera and stand in there. We can move it down some. Let's see on Facebook, you got 63. And he got fifty five uh, uh, just this week, go back and in a few days for the replay the county can watch your watches so. The Hidden County Marching Bikes would like to thank you for your support tonight as we conclude our show. We close our performance with this yeah. swing arrangement from Toy Story with Randy Newman's You Got a Friend in Me.
you all for your attention. Have a wonderful evening, and go Vikings! <laughs> Here is tonight's winning split the pot ticket. Number? Get about. It is ticket number two, three, zero, six, eight, zero, seven, two, three, zero, six, eight, zero, seven. If you are the lucky holder of that ticket, come to the press box. Claim your winning with your ticket. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, I think you're fine. Right, we're back here uh, from Vint County High School after that halftime. Nice job there by the Vint County Marching Vikings. That show, hopefully you can hear it. So we begin. I'll slide this if we have to. We try to get it here. We begin second half action here. Again, weather moving. Uh, Looked at the radar at halftime, Brad, and uh, looked like it was coming due north. So we'll be looking to the southern skies. Hopefully we can get this one in as we start the second half here from Vitt County as the Vikings lead 7 to nothing on a five-yard Cody Colley touchdown run in the second quarter. Sprankle set to kick for the ceramics as we start second half action. Collie and Carr deep. This one will go to Zane Carr as he picks it up off the bounce at the 10 yard line. Looking for a block up the right side. Nice shot by Collie there. And Carr gets across the 30 to the 32 yard line. Carr returns the ball for Vinton County. Taken down by Miller Dickerson. Looks like the official spot will be at the 33. As Vinton County takes over on offense here in the second half. Again, the Vikings playing exceptional defense in the first two weeks of the season, but uh, offense just a step behind. So we'll see if they made any adjustments at halftime with Dameron under center. Colley in motion. The handoff is now it's a keeper. And that's not going to go anywhere as the I interior. That was, that was a busted play. There. And it looked like it. It looked like the interior line uh, for Crooksville got a hold of Braylon there as he ran forward. The loss of a yard on the play. It'll set up second down and 11. Again, second half play just underway here from Vitt County High School. 
Nathan Lamb here alongside Brad Rose. Bringing you BMG Media's coverage of Itt County High School football. Week number two. There's a handoff to Collie, and number 77 drags him down. Collie, the ball carrier. Sky Moore, and it looks like there might have been some extracurriculars uh, as Moore really emphasized that tackle. It looks like we've got a... Uh, could be a penalty here on Bit County. As the uh, ball carrier brought down at the 30... So as we wait on this call, uh, here we go. All right, block in the back on Bitten County. They'll take the loss of three on the play. It'll be third down now and 13 from the 30-yard line. Again, the Bitten County offense going backwards here to start second-half action. Cameron now. In the wing T here, takes the snap, looks to the right, throws. River Hayes catches the ball Double down at the 40. Please. Double caught that one. Hey, Looked like someone jumped early, possibly here. They didn't blow the play dead, so that tells me it could be on Crooksville. Up, oh, illegal procedure. So it is on Vinton County. That's a tough one, Nate. Very tough one. Someone lined up in the wrong position. So we'll back them up five more yards, and we'll replay third down. It'll be third and 18 now. Dameron was trying to get uh, one of the wide receivers or the tight end or someone to move, and I don't. I think there was a miscommunication. Ball there. Against County, moves the ball back to their own 25-yard line. Now third and 18 from the 25, 10, 49 to go in the now. third quarter. We are just underway here in second half action. Mid County leads Crooksville 7 to 0. Jammer takes a snap, looking to pass. Colleague over the middle. He's going deep to River Hayes. Nope. He's going to Carr. Oh. And it's just dropped. Wow, he had that on his fingertips. He has just about pulled it in. Ryan Moore on the coverage there. Nice coverage, nice pass, and almost a really nice catch by Zane Carr. But it'll bring up fourth down and 18. Mid County will have to punt. Rasky will drop deep as the wind begins to pick up here at Bitt County High School. And the wind is not going to be in favor of Rasky as it's blowing right in his face. Really starting to get going now, Nate. And a snap. Rasky with the boot. It's a low kick. And it takes a Viking roll. And it's still rolling. Down to the Crooksville 37 yard line. River says, Get going, ball. River gave some encouragement to the football there. As it's getting really windy up here, Brad. Get nervous. All right. Uh, the canopy's trying to travel here. Yeah, a we, bit. we're going to have to hold this down. Ah, we've got it. Crooksville take over. Hopefully this blows through quickly. Uh, looking at the radar, we might get lucky this might. We could. It looked like it was dissipating. Um, some of the southern games in Ohio have been called or delayed. There's a handoff to Dickerson. He's going around the right side. Brought down on the play by Cody Colley there. A nice play by Colley on that tackle. Still a decent pickup by Dickerson and Crooksville. It'll be second down and six. Ten minutes to go in the second, or in the third quarter. Bitten County up seven to nothing. Crooksville again in the no huddle. I'm going to call it the slow huddle offense because they don't, they don't get in a hurry. And the snap, the handoff. Now it's a keeper now. Mm. Cottrell, and he's dancing his way. Oh, still going. Down. Finally brought down on the play by Caden Collins. CC brings him down at the 50-yard line. After he danced his way through a lot of Viking defenders there. Picking up the first down. It'll actually be at the 48-yard line of it County now. Crooksville driving to the Vint County side of the ball for the first time tonight on it, on their own drive. 
9.17 to go in the third quarter. Cottrell in the pistol. Hands to Dickerson. Dickerson Ooh, didn't like that nice way. Cuts back. back. Zane Carr trips him up. He's still on his feet, though. Does get back to the line of scrimmage. As Moore, Colley, Carr, they were all in on that tackle there. Owen Hire, Brown. Quite a few Vikings brought uh, Dickerson down on that play. What about that change of direction there, Brad? The play was to the left, and he just bit and went straight right. He said, hey, they've got it figured out. I'm going the other way. <laughs> Managed to get back to the line. And so here we go, second down and 10 from the 48. This time, nobody in the backfield, and we've got a flag. Looks legal. like yeah, legal formation there against Crooksville. So it uh, second, I think second penalty on Crooksville tonight. They played a pretty clean game, other than the interception uh, and fumble that they've ha that they had in the first half. Uh, they've penalty wise, they've really played very well. Second down. second down and 15 now from the 47 yard line and there's a sweep nope it's a keeper Keep. and Cottrell gets across the 50 yard line or to the 50 yard line it'll be a big third down here from the midfield point uh, third down and 12 here Brad is there any chance you you, you go two downs here uh, I don't think so I think you try to get the first down here on this third down play again uh, wind at the Crooksville's back here uh, very strong wind 750 to go in the third quarter Cottrell this time with Dickerson flank to his right four wide receivers and he's going to look to drop back and pass brisker he sets up a screen nice. and it's a nice play there and nice tackle oh, by river hey oh no that was that was brown no that was not brown that, yes it was brown it was Dawson brown they're going to say it was incomplete what really it looked it looked complete to me. Yeah, it was it was a catch. It was. It was a catch. Uh, Clock still running. It was a catch. It was a gain of five uh, on that play. Uh, back to the original line of scrimmage now, and they are in punt formation. So you called that one right, Brad. They picked up three yards. Could have been more if not for the nice tackle, shoestring tackle by Brown. Dickerson takes the snap, or that's Conkle. Wow, that's wind assisted. Boy, there. you talk about you talk go, about it might be go. on the one. No, it's Sports into the end zone. What a big break by Vitt County there. That was a 50-yard punt. <laughs> a 45-yard punt in the air. Uh, bounced at about the five-yard line and scored it into the end zone. Now Vitt County will have the football. Uh, first and 10 on the 25 or 20 yard line instead of the one foot line where they could have been. Uh, so we will we will take that uh, bit of luck there. As uh, again a 50 yard punt, but it goes into the end zone with the 30 mile an hour winds we have here blowing due north. It's kind of an odd uh, trajectory of the wind here. Usually it's at our back going uh, west to east or uh, a little north to south action, but this is just straight north. That was a very, very nice punt, but you called it wind assisted. It is. It, it had a hang time of about five seconds, I think. That could have been an NFL kick. As we have a timeout for water on the 20 yard line, the Vikings will start this drive. Up 7 0. Now that drive by Crooksville ate up about half the quarter as there's 6.53 to go here. Uh, they were were able to move the ball a little bit, uh, picking up one first down. You want to. And we also want to pass along um, the last chance. Do you got a child interested in playing flag football, K through third grade, or a youth volleyball player grades fourth through sixth? Please go to the courthouse or the auditor's office Monday, 8.30 to 4, anytime Monday, 8.30 to 4, and complete a form. The cost is $20. Here's a handoff to Carr, and he's got some room up the middle. He makes a man miss, two nice miss, and he's run. brought down Still from going. behind. Finally, that was Dickerson holding on for dear life. As he waited for a fellow ceramic to take Carr down. Boy, it's just like he gets to that point and just gets held up by one guy long enough for, for a couple people to come and bring him down. Where's those old school breakaway jerseys at? Man? Oh, yeah. Well, probably in the closet somewhere. I don't know. 
First and ten for the Vikings. And there's a handoff up the middle to Moore. Gets about three yards on the play. Talk about a bruising bruising back. That's that's who he is. He's not going to lose yards. He's going to continue to to get positive yards on the play. As three yards and a cloud of dust. Three yards and a cloud of dust. You know, if you average three and a half yards like we did in the first half on the ground, you can't lose. It's impossible. Six minutes and three seconds to go in the third quarter. Dameron under center. Moore in the backfield. The wing T. Carr in motion. The handoff will be to Carr. It cuts up the middle again. Spins. Makes nice a man miss. And he's down near the first down. It's just a broken record. Every time he gets the ball, he's going for eight, nine, ten yards a pop. Another manageable third down here. <laughs> exactly, and we're on the 44-yard line. And 5.35 to go in the third quarter. Third and one, Vid County up 7-0 to zero here from Vid County High School. Dameron takes a snap. Hands it to Carr again on the same play. This time he's wrapped up, oh, he and he's to. going to churn for the first down as he gained three yards on the play, but there uh, is a flag. Let's, uh, let's hope it's not a hold on It this. looked like it was near the line of scrimmage, and it looks to be a hold on Vinton County. That'll bring up a third down and ten. Carr gets up a little gingerly. Might be a little, a little winded. I mean, he just ran for 20 yards with... A lot of people on his back and two and back to back plays. It's going to set up a third down and ten now. As again, what an impressive run there by Carr. Got caught in the backfield and still managed to go forward five yards to pick up the first down yardage, just negated by the penalty. He, he refuses to go down with first contact. Absolutely. All right, Dameron in the shotgun now. We've got three wide. Ratchke in the backfield. Moore, the deep back. Looks like Crooksville is going to drop back in coverage. You got the screen set up and incomplete there. A lot of zip on that pass to River Hayes. Probably a good thing that it was incomplete because he was getting ready to run into a wall of ceramics. Seemed like a little late developing, maybe. That'll bring up fourth down and ten again. Penalty killing the drive here in a seven nothing game. And of course, the wind picks up just as we're getting ready to punt. <laughs> Punting into the wind here. Rasky snap. The kick is away. It's a spiraling kick, and it's being held up by the wind, and this one's not going to get a Vinton County bounce. As it hits at the 44-yard line and bounces back to the 45. So Crooksville takes over again right near where uh, they were forced to punt last time. Now with 4.40 to go, I believe Crooksville with three first downs for the game. So let's see if Vinton County's defense can continue to be the bright spot here in this early 2021 season as they've given up just one score in uh, six quarters of play, trying to make it seven here with 4.40 to go in this third quarter. Four wide. And Cotra uh -oh. looking deep. He throws uh -oh. over the middle, and it's intercepted. Oh, oh and dropped by River Hayes. Intercepted and dropped by River Hayes. That had a lot of zip on it. Now, Brad, on that pass right there, how much was that changed by the by the wind? I think had the wind not been there, that, that might have been ribs real easy. I Could have it been. It, it really leaked down the field. Uh, again, a nice tight spiral. It was just 10 yards down past the the receiver and Hayes again with almost the fourth interception uh, for Vinton County. We might have an interception war between him and Walt. See who can get the most uh, by the end of the year. And handoff. Nope, it's a keeper. Nice little keeper there by Dickerson on the. Uh, was that Dickerson? Or was that, that was Cottrell there? Pick up a five on the play. Again, sets up another third down for midfield here. 4-10 to go in the third quarter. Linebackers are creeping. Cottrell going to take his time. 15 on the play clock. Again, the slow huddle offense of Crooksville here. Looks like he's changing the play. He sees the... Four seconds. Sees the uh, impending blitz. There's a snap. There's a quick pass over the middle. In off the fingertips of Cottrell there. 
or Dickerson, Cottrell, on the pass. I like the I like the audible there by Cottrell. Um, you know, you get Dickerson down to the first line, first down marker and stop and pop uh, just a little bit outside on the pass there, or else that could have been a first down. And instead, you're going to have another punt for Dickerson by uh, the Crooksville Ceramics. I think this is the uh, fifth or sixth punt tonight. Again, the wind a little a little less on this punt, but still a good punt. And that one's going to hit at the six and bounce into the end zone again. And we have a penalty flag back here at the line of scrimmage. That's never good. So we'll see here. Vikings did have some pretty good rush there on the punter. Looks like it is on Crooksville and Coach Carper. And the Vikings will decline, and I probably say that's a good call with the wind blowing the direction it is. Yeah. We'll take it at the 20 and start over here with 3.36 or three thirty six to go in this third quarter. Vikings up 7-0. I'd like to see us grind out a nice 80-yard drive right now. Well, Brad, you and most of the people watching. Let's see if I can find some scores here. We'll read a couple of scores again. Uh, we want to thank our sponsors, uh, Ramey's Mobile Homes. Ramey's Mobile Homes of uh, Chillicothe and MacArthur, uh, Spring Street Sports uh, here in MacArthur, and the Adena Healthcare, uh, the exclusive healthcare provider for BMG Media this season, all season long, Adena, uh, really helping us out this year uh, here with BMG's coverage of Eaton County High School football. Dameron, and there's that counterplay to to that was not to Carr. Could tell who that was to. Yeah, that kind of lost. Cody Colley. Colley. There we go. Should have known if it wasn't Carr, it was Colley. How about this for a score early in the first quarter? Again, some of these scores, uh, games just starting due to weather delay. Uh, Wheelersburg 7, Chillicothe nothing early in the game. Cameron drops back. He's going to pass here. Got some rush coming, and it's mm. tipped by Dickerson there at the line of scrimmage. He read that thing from the start. Stood pat, got up, knocked the ball down. Uh, Warren leading Morgan 14-12. to 12. That's kind of a surprising score there. Uh, Newark Catholic is up on Nelson, New York, 17-0 in the second quarter. That's a big-time non-conference opponent, opponent for a TBC Ohio Nelson, New York, the uh, Megs Marauders, 41, Belfry, 24. And there's a pitch to Colley around the left side. He's going to get hit at the line. Looks like he got about two yards on the play, and it's going to bring up fourth down. Alexander, 14, South Point, nothing right now. That was one of our pick em games on the red zone this week. And, uh, Brad, you're over there pumping your fist. I take it I had the Alexander Spartans <laughs> losing that one, didn't I? I don't recall. I, I probably did. <laughs> Again, the uh, Viking Red Zone report. Uh, we'll have a, a recap of this game. Uh, then we'll drop on Monday or Tuesday this coming week, and then we'll have a preview of next week's game versus Trimble on Thursday. So stay tuned there. Rasky back to punt. And this one is off the side of the foot. Mm. It's going to give Crooksville some really good field position as that one goes out of bounds. And the referee continuing to walk forward. 31-yard line is where Crooksville will take over. Man, we just, uh, it's about a 10-yard punt there. Crooksville will have a first and 10. We keep uh, exchanging okay. possessions, but line. we keep working our way backwards here, line. Nate. Wrong direction for us. Yeah, especially in the second half. Uh, we really, the first half we played mainly on the Vitt County side of the football field. This half, uh, it's been right at midfield, and now we're we're starting to drive for Crooksville on the 31 yard line. And there's a fumble on the play, and Vitt County's got it. What a play! Oh yeah, by number 88. Mr. Allman. Mr. Ashton Allman. Ashton Allman there on the play. Well, you talk about big-time plays and in, in big-time matchups. That was a big-time play there. Uh, Crooksville with all the momentum after that shank punt uh, with the ball inside the 35-yard line. And now 
Benton County takes back over, takes momentum. 2.05 to go in the third quarter, up 7-0. We'll see if something can happen here on this drive. Let's stretch the field here. Let's, let's, let's go deep. And nice. here's Carr around the left or around the right side. Look Makes two men miss. Stiff arm still on his feet. And finally drugged down by number 50. Near midfield at the 48-yard line. Bradley Ray on that arm tackle. I believe he just grabbed his arm and swung as hard as he could to get him out of bounds. Four four broken tackles on that play. I think Carr did some of the swinging on that one. <laughs> First and 10 from the 48. Hey, if it worked that time, try it again. This time it goes for seven more yards, eight more yards as Carr finally brought down by multiple ceramics. Carr has to be getting close to that century mark, doesn't he? Oh, Carr, is, Carr has to be over the century mark by now. As we've got some ceramics slow to get up there. Sets up a second down and two from the 45. Now, this is the point last week, Brad, in the Unioto game where Vint County's offense really started to take control, and you saw those 15-yard, 10, 15-yard spurts of, of, uh, of you know, plays there. Uh, 115 to go in the third quarter. Is this just a wear-you-down type offense? Right. Yes, it is. It has been so far, and I think we're going to see a major dose of it here down the stretch. I say that, and Carr gets brought down at the line of scrimmage for no gain. It sets up a third down and three. As we uh, get near the end of the third quarter and the wind starts to pick up, good news, though, we'll have the wind at our back in the fourth quarter. Can we thank everybody out there tuning in to this broadcast? There's we are on uh, Facebook and YouTube. BMG Media Vent County is what you need to search. Cameron. Nice. Is the pitch. Nice. Can Carr get the edge? He does and gets a first down. The stiff arm's been lethal tonight, Nathan. Oh, it has. Pick up the tough yards for the first down. This is County first down. And that, as he scampers out of bounds, will leave us with 19 seconds left in the third quarter. First and 10 now, ball on the 40-yard line. Tamron in the shotgun. He's going to look, throws it out to Collie, and that was a backwards pass. And they called it incomplete, but that was absolutely was, a backwards pass. It was close. Collie was not prepared for that. I think he thought he was going to be a little further into the flat before he saw the ball. Yeah, I agree there. It kind of caught him by surprise, but uh, Vinton County with a break there because that for sure looked like it might have been backwards from our point of view. Five seconds off the clock. It's 14 seconds left now. Second down and 10. Carr with the handoff. Gets met. Continues to nice. push. Now breaks away, but they're going to... Oh, man, they're going to call Ooh. forward progress. I don't know. I mean... A bit of extracurricular going on Coach. down there. Coach Carper reeling some players in. Coach is... Uh, Coach is amped up a little bit here. All right, the ball carrier. Again, Carr refusing to quit as we come to the uh, conclusion of the third quarter and another quarter where the Vitt County defense shuts an opponent out. That's six of seven quarters, Brad. <laughs> Let me ask you this. We, ta we talked about this team in the preseason. Did you expect this team to pitch six shutout quarters in their first seven completed quarters this season? I wish I could say I did. <laughs> I guess I'd look like a really intelligent football analyst, but uh, no, I did not. We, we honestly, going into this season, thought maybe the defense would be a little behind the offense, and our offense would be what carried us early in the season. Right. We thought the defense would catch up at some point. Right. But we didn't expect what we're seeing on the field right now. Yes, absolutely. 
So that's the end of the third quarter. It's going to set up a third down and ten for the Vikings now with the wind, wind at our backs for this final frame. Again, windy. Still windy here. Uh, a little bit of a mist periodically, but no rain yet here in MacArthur. I know a few people are letting us know that it's... Uh, it's raining to the south of us, but none here. Hopefully we can squeeze in this next 12 minutes without any kind of delay and uh, walk out of here with the win. It would be nice. Third down of 10. Brain, uh, Dameron in the shotgun. He rolls out, getting chased, throws it up, and just out of reach was Caden Collins there on the reception. On the intended reception. Uh, fourth down and nine from the 39-yard line. Do you go or do you punt? I mean, well, if you if you punt it, you just base you barely pooch it in the air, and it's gonna it's gonna fly inside the 20. Coach is gonna think about it. Okay, so here's the scenario: your defense is playing great, absolutely unbelievable in the first two games this season. There's 11.55 to go in this matchup. There's still plenty of time. The quarter just started, the fourth quarter. I'm not sure I take a chance here. I, you got the wind at your back. I think if you kind of corner kick it, yeah. uh, kick it to the to see the 10-yard line mark down there, just kick it to that spot. Hopefully it bounces out of bounds inside the 10. Uh, but you got the wind at your back. There's really... I don't I don't think I see Ratchke going back out there. <laughs> I don't either, so... I'm in agreement with you. I though. guess I, I thought I thought you pin him deep. More of a conservative uh, coach than Coach T.J. Carper. Is. Absolutely. I mean, uh, ride your defense though. Yeah. Uh, yeah with that pin, said, with that said, deep, yeah. Flip the field. Um, they like to pass, and I think with this wind blowing in their face, it would be tough. It could be. All right, here we go. Fourth down. There's a handoff to Carr. Carr cuts it up the middle. He's well, across the 30. He's down inside the 28 yard line. That's why we're up here. And <laughs> coach Carper picks up 11 yards lines. on the play. 11-yard pickup by Zane Carr picks up the first down. Yeah, let's just dial up that 11-yard play. Let's go ahead, get the first down. What do we know? Burn a clock. What do we know? Yeah, that's why I'm in the booth. <laughs> Big time first down there by Vic County. 11:40 to go in the fourth quarter here. Seven nothing lead over Crooksville. Shall we say Carr again on the handoff? This time gets hit at the line. Ooh, ball. Ball's on the ground though this time. And it looks like Crooksville, Crooksville has had, the football. Had on ball, ball come out. So, uh, you know, here we are again. It's time for the defense to step out big and get a stop or get us a ball back here. Boy, talk about big-time plays and unfortunate events by both teams. Uh, seems like in the late first half and now through the second half so far have been riddled with mistakes. Crooksville takes over on the 28. Cottrell. Four wide again. Two receivers far to, to the near side. He's going to throw a quick pass. It's through the hands of Andrew Wilson. That could have been a, a big play right there. I've noticed... Um, Cottrell's got some zip on his ball there. I think uh, I'm not sure if he's if it's just the you know playing into the wind here, so he's trying to get everything he can on it or, or what. But he gets it there in a hurry. Does come out of there quick. Four wide again, same formation here. Let's see if they try to hand one off, and they do. Yep. Nice and we speed. swallow them up at the line of scrimmage. Uh, First one in there was Ashton Allman. I think we had eight guys right there yes. in the area. Uh, so. Quite a few Vikings there. Allman was the first one there. Another big play by the sophomore. Sophomore. I like I that. be calling that name for a few more years. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Especially uh, in the winter. Exceptional basketball player. Brings up a, a big third down here late in this one in the fourth quarter. 10.47 to go. Crooksville in the no huddle, four wide. They're going to pass. Looking downfield, going to number 30, and oh. it's almost intercepted. Pass was intended for Wolf and nearly intercepted by CC, my neighbor Collins. <laughs> pass intended for Wolf is broken up. 
by Kate Collins. Collins trying to get on the interception train here. As, uh, first up, first down We've got a little battle going for who can uh, who can have the most interceptions this year. I like it, though. I like it. All right, so Crooksville going to be forced to punt now, fourth down and 12. Just too deep here to to think about going for it, plus too much time left, I think, 10.34 to go. As they, I think we're uh, – are we going to block this kick? What are we doing here? Well, I believe we are because we know it's not going to go very far, and that's yeah. a very smart call by the coach here. The wind's picking up, and, and the Vinton County Vikings did try to block it. Again, there's no roll on the punt, very little, as uh, it's down at the 40-yard line. I like the call. I like the call. That's being situation. That's situational awareness, Brad. Uh, that's knowing that the, you can use the elements to your to your advantage. Now, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if many high school coaches would even think of that at that point. No, that, that's a good call. Uh, call by Coach Carper there. Mm -hmm. But I'm amazed. That was still a pretty impressive kick, Nathan. It was. It was a good kick. Um, into the wind. Into the wind. And that flag down there. If you look at the flag at the. Uh, Next to the school board, the American flag, it is sticking straight out. Looks like we're on the moon. As the wind continues to pick up, no rain yet. There's the pitch to Carr around the right side. Can he get some room? He does. Turtles a man. Picks up five yards, brought down by Dickerson as he... Launched himself. That's not always a smart thing to do as you uh, leave yourself uh, kind of vulnerable in that position there. But and he did come down kind of upended a little doing bit. Doing everything he can to get uh, extra yardage is Mr. Zane Carr. As we are now under 10 minutes to go, 9.58 to go in the fourth quarter here from Vinton County High School. Second down and five. Moore. In the backfield, the pitch is to Colley around the left side. Nice block by Moore. Colley. Nice vision. Cuts it up behind that block by Moore. Great job there by the offensive line. And Moore leaking out there for that lead block. It'll be first down and 10 now from the 49 yard line. Clock has stopped on 941. And now we'll roll. And the wind at the back of Vinton County. As they're looking to come down and take a what would seem like an insurmountable two-score lead by this Brooksville offense. There's Carr, again, Spending. pushing ahead for six. Refuses to go right. down. I'm, I'm not sure how long it's been since I've seen someone run. Maybe Timmy Usley, since I've seen someone run with that much that much force. And the kid's not he, he's not big. No, but I mean he's 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 leaping over defenders, he's spinning, he, he's cutting. I mean he's just doing everything there is. Putting his head down and running people over. Yeah. A little bit of everything. Second down four. Hand off to Moore up the middle, and he's going to get your three and a half, four yards, just like he always does. More importantly, clock continues to roll. 8.30 now to go in the fourth quarter here from Vinton County High School. As we bring you coverage of Vinton County High School football, brought to you by Ramey's Mobile Homes, Spring Street Sports, and the exclusive health care provider of BMG Media, which is the Adena Health hey. If you look into the, the lights over there, Nathan, we're starting to get a little rain. I see a little bit of rain coming down. I can feel it. Carr takes the pitch around the right side. Another block Whoa. by Moore. Carr breaks a few tackles. Gets the first down after a nice scamper brought down by Isaac Love for Crooksville. And that's not good. When your lineman is at the is 15 yards downfield as a defensive player, that's not what, where you want to be when you're trying to stop a running a running back getting to that second level and still blocking downfield. Yeah, I mean, what's that? What's that tell you about the push? The initial push from this offensive line of uh, uh, County here. Clock continuing to roll. Seven thirty-three left in this game. Collie gets the pitch, finds a hole. Now he cuts oh, it outside, wow. makes one man miss. He's got the corner and he's drugged. Out of bounds at the 20. It's like the 18 yard line. By Ethan Another first down. 
Now initially there, I believe he was supposed to cut that up, but there was nothing there. Found a, a little bit of uh, green grass on the outside, made one man miss. Bounced it to the outside. Before getting tackled. We've got a timeout by Crooksville. That's their first of a half. 7.23 to go. They're trying to figure out a way to stop this Vitton County team from punching one in here because they know uh, the way this defense has been playing tonight that uh, if they get down by two scores with less than you know seven minutes to go in, in, a, in the fourth quarter here, it's, it's almost over at that point. Yeah, that's insurmountable. I mean, without some assistance. Yes. Again, we want to thank BMG Media for teaming up with us here at the Viking Red Zone to bring you live action. Uh, the only live video stream of Vinton County High School football this fall. Uh, they also We also stream uh, Vinton County Vikings volleyball games, which we had one last night. It was a I know, Brad, you were there. It was a heck of a game and a heck of a win uh, for Lick County Lady Vikings was well, anytime uh, you can beat, against uh, Nelson, New York, yeah. uh, which they uh, – one of the best team, better teams in the conference. Um, seems like every year, Vinton County, Nelson, New York, and uh, Alexander in, in girls' volleyball is always uh, – Always a really good battle for the conference championship, which Vic County, with uh, I believe they have 10 seniors on the squad this year, they're looking to win it again. Started off well. It did. It started off well. They're now 2 0 on the early season after beating Warren and Nelson, New York. Uh, so, but you can continue to watch for coverage of Vic County Vikings volleyball here. And there cool. is an offsides on Crooksville. That'll help the cause. It'll make it first and five. 7.22 to go in the fourth quarter here from MacArthur. Currently playing on the play outside. Crookville. Inside to 15. First and five. For County. On the 14. Vinton County looking to go 2-0 and for the first time since 2013, Bradley. It's been a while. It has. Moore the back, car in motion, handoff is to Moore, and he's got a little bit of space there as he go. gets the first down, a gain of five. Ah, he could be a half a yard shy. Looks like a half a yard shy there. Gain of four. The two yards in the first quarter turned into three yards in the second quarter, and now you're seeing four-yard bursts by our big bruising back, Brock Moore. Give us some more of Moore. Let's see what they do here, and that would be a pretty good call if it were me. And we hand it to Carr instead. He's got a hole, and he's going to score. Is. There's a touchdown. Mitten County, Zane Carr, 6.48 to go. Carr up the middle, virtually untouched on that touchdown as the fireworks go off in the south end zone. Vinton County now leads 13 to nothing with 6.48 left. What vision by Mr. Carr? I mean, he sees, sees the entire field. He sees the lanes. He cuts back, spins, whatever he has to do to get, get the yardage he needs. Ooh. And that kick is no good. That's okay, though. Two-score lead. I'll, I'll take it. Two-score lead, 6.48 to go. Here for MacArthur. All right, so it's defense time now. Defensive time. They've stepped up. Uh, they've stepped up pretty much every quarter this year, uh, trying to put together the seventh shutout quarter in the first eight quarters of the season here as they try to close this one out and give Vinton County a 2-0 record here early in 2021. What do you Six. think we do here defensively? Do you pin your ears back and go for everything, or do we play conservative? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, well, I, I will say this. I, I don't think we've really rushed a whole lot in this game, probably less less than we did in week one against Unioto. I say you just sit back and, and keep doing what you've been right. doing here. Don't get too crazy. Again, that's uh, that's what T.J. Carper, coach, head coach T.J. Carper, told us in the uh, preseason. Stick to what you're good at. And uh, right now we're good at, at staying home and playing solid D. So we'll see if they can keep it up here. Ratchke going to kick it away. Ooh. Little short kick going to be fielded by, oh. oh, no one. As Sprankle now picks it up on his 20-yard line, and he's got to make something happen here as he's brought down. 
after a pickup of two. A little bit of a mistake there. I think he misjudged the bounce. Actually might have anticipated an up back taking that one. Yeah, I think he did. I think he thought the kid ahead of him was was going to grab that ball. Owen higher, yeah, Owen higher on the tackle there. Brooksville have it first and ten on their own twenty-three. Crooksville takes over. 6.43 to go in this one. 13 nothing. Vitt County up. And there's a blitz. Picked up and almost oh, caught. Oh. Almost picked off on the deflection. Thought he had. By River Hayes trying to even that interception mark with Brady Waltz at two apiece, but uh, just slipped out of his fingertips. Almost a great catch. It was. By Sp uh, Sprankle there. Almost had a nice little catch there, but uh, Hayes there to almost capitalize on the deflection. Again, another dart of a pass by Cottrell. A lot of zip on the ball. Here we go in the pistol with Dickerson. Has the back. A low snap. Roll to the left. Now it's going to be thrown and caught. Nope, broken up. And that was Josiah Thacker on the coverage there. Nice little break break up there. Looked like he almost had the ball for a second. Uh, but uh, Thacker doing a great job on defense covering from that linebacker position. Good job following his defender across the field too. Big third down here. Is it is it four down territory? 6.30 to go. You're on the 23. Has to be if you're Crooksville. We'll see. See if Vidden County sends anybody here. We've got trips to the near side. Single receiver to the far. Looks like they're going to drop back in coverage. They're sending one. Nice screen here to Dickerson. One man to beat. He Need does it. beat him. Need it. Across the 30. He got it. And he gets the first down. Needed 10 and got 12. Taken down by Brock Again, a little chippy down there on the sidelines. Yeah, uh, it's late. Um, looks like a few of the guys are kind of... Give up 11 yards, first and 10 for the ceramics with their own 34. Jawing back and forth a little bit. All right, another first down by Crooksville. 6.05 to go in this one. Crooksville needs to score twice. Vinton County trying for their first shutout of 2021 season. And down goes go. Cottrell. Byron Brisker on the sack. Cottrell taken down. That's a big play by the defense. Be a loss of six on the play. Maybe loss of yeah, loss of six on the play to bring up second down sixteen. Down Boy, the defense, just when you think Crooksville gets a little bit of a rhythm or a little bit of momentum, the defense makes a big play and shuts them down. And here we're going to send the blitz. Looks like maybe two. Here we come. Got it. Nope. Sets up the quick pass to... That was Raylan Wolf on the... On the pass there. Rush the pass, though. Uh, that's what happens when you send a couple of linebackers. The goal was either to sack the quarterback or make him get rid of it too early, and that's what happened there. Brings up third down, seven. We have another big third down play here. Again, the clock rolling. Well, not now. Clock down to 519 on that incomplete pass. Um, could this be two down territory or four down territory? It has to be. Ball on the 28-yard line of Crooksville. And Ashton Allman nearly Good with the sack there, but a nice little tackle by Moore. Tackle. Good job by Moore on that tackle. Gain of uh, one. It's now fourth down. Do you punt? 5-11 to go. You need two scores. Looks like they're going to drop back a punt. They are going to punt. They have a... They have a fake in their uh, bag of tricks here would be the time to run it with 5.11 to go. Fourth down, I just, 17. I just don't think so. Again, Vinton County going to go for the Ooh. block and nearly it get all. it. It's a little bit better kick. Wind has died down somewhat, but the ball will roll out of bounds at the 33-yard line. 34-yard line. 
Not no, a bad punt. No, another great punt. It's not good when your punter is the player of the game, though, Bradley. <laughs> no, but he sure is a, a solid athlete. I mean, yes. he's, he's been able to kick with the wind in his face. It did, uh, didn't face him one bit. And it's a kind of a three-headed monster with Dickerson, Cottrell, and Sprankle for this Crooksville team, offensively and defensively. And we've called their name quite a bit tonight. So we have five minutes and three seconds left in the fourth quarter. Live here from Vitt County High School for week two football action. And we want to thank Ramey's home, Mobile Homes, Spring Street Sports, and Adina, the exclusive healthcare provider of BMG Media. And we have a stoppage here. Timeout on the field by Vitt County. It'll be their second timeout. Vitt County down to one final timeout now with five minutes and three seconds left. Again, trying to close this one out against the Crooksville Ceramics and move to 2-0 and on the season. That's surprising. Huh? West Jefferson over Paint Valley, 27 to nothing. We'll try to... Find some t uh, scores around the TVC. New York Catholic leads Nelson, New York, 24 to 7. Alexander still up 14 nothing on South Point. Ireton 7, Jackson 0 in the second. That's surprising. Here we go. Five minutes and three seconds as the Vikings take over. Car in motion gets the handoff. Runs up the middle, and he's brought nice. down by Sprankle. Car, the ball carrier for Benton County. Taken down by and Sprankle. And Austin Bidon. Love on the tackle there as well. Another gain of five by Zane Carr. More importantly, the clock continues to run here from Vitt County High School. 4.42 to go. And a defensive masterpiece <laughs> by the Vikings of Vitt County tonight. Band of Clear Creek leads Unio to 14-3 in the third quarter. That might be a little closer than some people anticipated. Guy Academy leads Athens 34 to nothing in the third quarter. Now this Waterford team that beat Crooksville last week as there's a penalty flag on Vitt County for legal procedure. Uh, Waterford losing to Williamstown out of West Virginia. 12-6, that's in the fourth quarter. Hillsboro and Coach O'Rourke leads Goshen seven to nothing in the third quarter, second quarter. Sorry, Piketon uh, has an early six nothing lead over Wellston. I believe that game started not too long ago. And there's going to be a <laughs> encroachment on Cole Grove or Cole Grove. I saw Cole Grove on there, so I said that. Uh, Megs <laughs> at the half leads Belbury sixty two to thirty. And I really love that we get to play Culture Cleveland and Negs as the first conference game. That's going to be a test. That's uh, How about that as a lead-up? Vinton County's defense versus Culture Cleveland and Negs high-powered offense. 62 points and a half. That's a lot of points, man. Here we go. First, or Second down and five now as we trade five-yard penalties. 427 left. Rashke in motion. He'll take the pitch. Wide open hole up in the middle there. He gets across the 45 to the 50-yard line. First down. Gain of 15 on the play by Rashke. Boy, talk about that offensive line opening up holes, man. That was a that was a gap right there. Great job by the offensive line tonight and defensive line. Big boys up front doing their job. First and 10 from the 50. Milking the clock. There's the handoff to Moore, and his efforts get him eight yards on the play. Again, this kid starts out slow, but by the end of the game, he's churning out five, six, seven, eight yards a pop. Pick up a seven yard, second down three. 
3.30 now. 20 seconds on the play clock. They'll milk this down to right around three minutes before you know, we snap it. What's really amazing about that Meg's Belfry score is 92 points and a half. That's a lot of points I together, mean, yeah. Nobody's playing defense at all. They just have to be running up down the field. There's Rasky. He's going to try to get to the outside. Nice. He does. It's a foot race now. One man to beat. Can he get there? Tackled down by... That was Sprankel. Inside the 10-yard line down to the 7. A great carry there by Rasky. 36 yards. Again, a great job by that offensive line setting that edge. Another big play here late in this game. The offense again, just like against Unioto, really turning it on in the second half. Again, running that clock down. I like this. Dameron. Hand off to Moore. No, he keeps it, and he's going to score from the five it's on the keeper. The there you go, Dameron. Nice job on the keeper. Get the fireworks. Here come the fireworks, and I tell you, it's dark enough to see him now. 19 to nothing. Vinton County leads. 2.55 to go in this one. Coach this Harper is, getting up. A little chest bump there. This is all but over now. Thacker one, oh. one for two in his career on extra points. Let's see if he can get that above 50% here. Snap back, ball down, kick is up, and the kick is good. good. Nice job. Excellent. Back two, four, three tonight on extra points. Nice job by the Vikings offense there going down, down the field and uh, really some big chunk plays there by the by the offense all on the ground doing what they need to do eating up the clock 255 to go 20 to nothing lead now if you're Crooksville you're just playing for playing for points on the board here playing for pride uh, you know as uh, as we've talked about Vint County six of seven shutout quarters to start the season. Crooksville has been shut out six of seven quarters to start out this season. So they're looking for any momentum they can get going into next week as they continue this road trip of 2021 for the Crooksville Ceramics. I feel bad for their seniors. I do. Um, if you did not know, Crooksville will be playing all their games on the road this year as they're some, having some difficulties with their stadium there in Crooksville. We were actually supposed to go there uh, for this game. Uh, but with that issue they're having there, they're, they're here. Next, uh, next game they play Riverview at Riverview. And the pooch kick taken to the 46, 47 yard line. Crooksville, 53 yards to score here. 2.50 to go. Looks like looks like Coach wants to keep the shutout. He's got most of the starters back here. Oh, I don't blame him. I don't blame him at all. Uh, you know, I, I, weirder things have happened. I mean, 2.50, there's still plenty of time in this game, and it's a, it's a three-score game. Two touchdowns. You know, if they've got a, a, any kind of kicker at all, two touchdowns and, an extra, or and a field goal, and you're – well, now it would be 19, wouldn't it? Never Close. mind. Never Close. mind. Never mind. It's been a long day. Nathan. It's been a long day. There's a oh. pass over the middle dropped by Dickerson. I think he heard footsteps there. Yeah, I think he did too. Wolves was closing in on him. Probably probably heard me up here trying to do simple math. Yeah. 242 now. And again, like like just right there, you know, they're they're half a step away from from a 52-yard touchdown pass. So Again, this one not over yet. Bidden County needing one more stop here to secure the shutout. Cottrell throws to the sideline. Sprankle on the reception. Picks up six yards on the play. C.C. Brown was over there. 
Moore. Third and four here. 2.20 to go. Clock rolling. Crooksville, I believe, has two timeouts remaining. There's another quick pass. And that is good enough for a first down. Thacker on the quick tackle there. So now the clock will stop as the chains are set. Who do we have on the chain gang tonight, Brad? Uh, that would be Jake Brown, Jimmy Seanborn, Jason Newsom, and Gary Hale. I'll tell you what, you talk about a football team right there, that'd make a heck of a four-man right there. <laughs> There's a pass deep and incomplete as the intended receiver was Sprankle. With C.C. Collins on the play. Defensive coverage for the Vikings. 159 to go. Second down, 10 from the 42-yard line. Well, I think we lucked out on the weather, Brad. I think we're going to escape. It was pretty questionable there for a while. Here we go. Second down, pass over the middle. Caught. Nice catch by Dickerson there. Excellent Great catch. job. As uh, Dawson Brown on the tackle. That was a really nice catch. Not much yardage on the play, and the clock continues to roll. 140 to go now. Third and seven. And there's another throw to the sideline. This one's going to be off the hands <laughs> of number 28. Austin Love. A little upset with himself after that one. Clock stop. 133 to go. Fourth down and seven. This could be this could be your the shutout. shutout streak here. Well, not not necessarily a streak, but uh, I mean, what what did Lou Brown say? You win two or you uh, win three, and that's called a winning streak. Yes, I do believe you're correct. The great Lou Brown from Major League. See Viking corner still awake out there as they want this shutout. There's a pass over the middle and incomplete. No flag on the play. Good coverage there by Dawson Brown. I'd say a couple of knees here and uh, yeah, have their shutout. 126 to go. Vin County leads 20 to nothing over Crooksville. And we thank you for tuning in to BMG Media's coverage of Vin County High School football uh, with our sponsor, Spring Street Sports, Aramis Mobile Homes, and of course the Adina. The Adina Medical Group. The exclusive medical provider of BMG Media. We thank all of our sponsors this year. And if you're looking to maybe get on board with us, uh, you can reach out to BMG Media's Facebook page or you can get a hold of Brad or myself as Carr breaks off another nine yard run to the 48 yard line. We're down to a minute and 15 seconds left. If you want to be a part of this broadcast, if you like it, if you want to get in on it, uh, get a hold of us. We will. Gladly team up with anybody, local or, dare I say, international. <laughs> you know? Well, that's the way we roll. That's the way we roll here. Parker and we got uh, Parker Seanborn in the game quarterback now. 50 seconds left. Seanborn now running the offense. Carr in motion. The handoff to Moore. Moore gets the first down and Moore across the 50 to the 44-yard line. 45-yard line. Clock stops on the Another first, down for County. first down, and we will have one more play. 28 Another. seconds left on the play clock, 34 seconds left in the game. Another strong run by Brock Moore. Moore probably, I would guess, over the 50-yard mark for the game. Again, we'll have complete stats on the Viking Red Zone uh, report when we come out with our podcast on Monday. Stay tuned for that as Parker Seanborn takes this snap. Hands it to Rashke. Rashke slips a tackle. And it's finally brought down by Sprankle at the 
at the 40-yard line to pick up a five yards on the play, and that's going to do it from Vinton County tonight. 2-0, Nathan. Vinton County Vikings move to 2-0 after the 20 to nothing shutout of the Crooksville Ceramics. And there go the fireworks. The Vikings win again and push their record to 2-0 and on the season. What a sight, Brad. I never I never, uh, never grow tired of it. No. I mean, as a young child watching fireworks, it's just it's amazing to watch stuff blow up, right? <laughs> How else would you end a victory celebration? Fireworks. Oh, fireworks are wonderful. And, it, and it's something that I don't know if any other program around here does. I don't think so. I think they do, and they're still going up there. It's like the 4th of July all over again. As the Vikings run down to uh, ring the victory bell under the scoreboard. And some of Viking Corner has now come down to congratulate them from their tailgates. Boy, they're still shooting They're still shooting the fireworks off, Brad. Hey. I tell you. you now, got to celebrate those home wins. Now, who... Um, who do we have up there lighting those things off? Uh, I believe that's Kobe Wall and possibly Logan Ward. So a couple of former Vikings themselves up there playing with fire. Yeah. As the bell rings here in week number two at Vinton County High School, the Vinton County Vikings moved to 2-0 and on the season. One more game before we start conference play. And that will be next week against the Trimble Tomcats, which um, I have not got confirmation on this yet, but I would imagine um, <laughs> I imagine that I got a funny text. Uh, I'll have to tell you about it off the air. Okay. Uh, I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> what was I saying, Brad? I don't know. Maybe kick time? Uh, oh, no, no, yeah. So I, I would imagine that uh, Trimble probably picked up a win tonight. Um, I didn't see a score. I didn't see a score for Trimble, but they were playing Miller, so I imagine they picked up a win tonight. Um, and next week will be 2-0. Vinton County traveling to 2-0. Miller for a big matchup, um, cross-TVC matchup between uh, the Ohio Division and Vinton County and the Hawking Division in Trimble. I would imagine that that game will be the Power 1 of 5 game of the week. That's... That's just speculation right now. We will have that information when we do our uh, our, our podcast. podcast for that this week in the Viking Red Zone. We will have that for sure. Uh, what you're seeing on the screen is something that Coach Carper's kind of started here this season. Uh, the cheerleaders and, and all the football players get together and, and actually sing the alma mater to the crowd. Yes. And New that, tradition. That's, that's pretty that's cool. something you see um, some of the big-time uh, programs do in college football, Notre Dame, Ohio State. Uh, so we'll let the uh, we'll let the band play the alma mater before we continue our post game show. As Vitt County moves to 2 and 0 on the season with a 20 to nothing win over the Crooksville Ceramics out of the MVL. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to continue our post-game show here. We'll have all the stats on the Viking Red Zone report when we come out with our uh, review show on Monday. Uh, we will tape we tape our shows on Sunday. Um, we'll be sure to share those. But uh, as the band plays the fight song and the team celebrates on the crossover VC logo in midfield, we're going to talk a little bit about this one and... Uh, Wait for Coach Carper to come up and uh, hopefully get an interview with Coach Carper. 
Uh, Brad, 20 to nothing win tonight. I think, um, you know, at least us on our show, we kind of expected a victory uh, for from Benton County. Um, kind of expected something similar to this. Uh, I didn't expect a shutout, to no, be honest I, with you, I, by the defense. I was going to say the same thing. Yeah, so uh, how, how impressive is it? Uh, we've now completed seven of eight scoreless quarters and have only given up seven points this season. That, that's the most impressive stat there is on, with this team. I mean, the defense is playing lights out right now, especially those DBs, um, the interceptions, just everything we're doing defensively, uh, timely Timely tackles in the backfield, the sacks. I mean, there's just you could go on a lot about these kids in this defense. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, that's that's something that was a big question mark, uh, you know, early on uh, before this season started. Um, you know, the defense really stepped up in this one. Uh, Crook, Crooksville really never got into a rhythm offensively. They 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 were able to make a, a few plays here and there, but uh, I think I think they finished the game with around seven first downs and. Uh, you know, obviously the first half having 20 yards of offense, it's really going to be hard to win ball games when you're when you're unable to move the ball um, like they did tonight. And and you know, obviously the 20 to nothing score up there on the board uh, reflects that. But um, what about this Bitten County offense? We've seen it uh, last week. We get a, a nice kickoff return to open the season, and we drive a short field and score an early touchdown. And then the offense kind of gets gets dormant. Uh, until the late third quarter, fourth quarter of that Unioto game, they're able to really make some make some offensive uh, production, score another touchdown, and uh, and 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 get some yards easier in that fourth quarter. Not that it was easy. I mean, you only scored 12 points in that game, but uh, they seemed to get better as the game went along on offense, where the defense just kind of held pat the whole game long. Similar tonight, uh, you get the score early. Uh, the second quarter, third quarter, it's kind of back and forth. A lot of mistakes in the third quarter by both teams. Um, but what do you think? Um, what do you think of this defense as as they go into these late fourth quarters? They seem to be able to the the two and three yard gains seem to become five and ten yard gains. And then the next thing you know, you're breaking off a fifteen and twenty yard gain by Rashke or by by Zane Carr or Brock Moore's running up the middle for ten yards. How much of that is is us wearing and the and the and the most importantly, the offensive line wearing that defensive line down. Oh, it's it's all the offensive line. I mean, they start to control the game. You see it late in the games. They open up wide holes for these guys to cut through. Um, and and then Carr just carves them up. And you dash in a little bit of Rashke on the outside. And then you just pound more up the middle. I mean, it all predicates right off of the line. Those guys are up front are moving kids around. And, and they're able to just do what they want physically late in games. Yeah, and that's something that, uh, you know, if, if you go back and watch this one again, um, you'll notice uh, the holes on the line, they got pretty big in the fourth quarter. <laughs> they got pretty big in the fourth quarter. Uh, so it was a great job all around by by this team. Offensively, you know, you come out, you score three times. And, again, well, I feel like uh, the first quarter we left that touchdown there on the board um, as we are now – for the first time on camera, that's that's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's different. It's something uh, I don't think we have the face for television. That's why we have beards, Brad. It is why we have beards. I mean, we're we're set up for podcasts, voice of this well, system, we're, but we're not to look at. We're we're breaking it in now. We're breaking it in. Uh, but uh, yeah, offensively though, I mean, you you look at it, twenty points. Uh, probably could have had a couple more scores if. Uh, if we don't, you know, have some self-inflicted issues, a couple turnovers that we need to clean up. Uh, I really felt like last week, even though it was a closer game, I felt like we played a little bit better last week than we did this week, um, just in terms of uh, mistakes being made by us. Um, you know, the Unioto game was was not perfect, but it was pretty, pretty close um, in terms of us doing what we needed to do to pick up that win. Uh, tonight felt like there were some... Some situations during the game where you kind of felt like, hey, if we keep screwing up here, this thing could yeah, get away we, from us. They, we definitely kept them in it a lot longer than I expected them to. Yeah. Um, you know, was kind of looking for that maybe 20 by the half. Right. Uh, and then be able to cruise those last two quarters. It just didn't quite work out that way. A few little things. Every time the offense kind of got rolling, we made a few mistakes. That's uh, true. But defensively, Stellar. I mean, yeah, there's nothing you can say about it other than, uh, I mean, what did I call it earlier in the in the broadcast? 
I can't remember. I have to go back and listen. Um, but I gave it a name. So, I don't know. We'll have to come up with a name for this defense. Uh, you, you know, you look at the good defenses in the history of this program and and uh, all of sports in general. They all have that, that nickname, right? Yeah, you got the Steel Curtain, well, Silver I, Bullets. I didn't want to say anything about the Steel Curtain, you know, being a Browns fan. No. But, uh, <clears throat> Bengals fan? We're going to have our own... Uh, brown curtain or something this year. The brown curtain. The brown curtain. That doesn't sound very good. No, though, does it? Uh, that could be interpreted many ways. Could be. As we continue to wait on Coach DJ Carper to come up here uh, to get a quick interview with him. Um, Vinton County again, twenty to nothing winner, moves to two and zero on the season. Uh, again, the first time that the Vinton County Vikings have been two and zero since two thousand and thirteen. Uh, I believe a couple of our Coaching staff members were on that 2013 Benton County football team. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, would Andy Long be on Andy that Andy Long team? was the quarterback of that team. Mm-hmm. I believe um, Oosley was a youngster at that point, was he? Yes, I, I think so. He was uh, – he might have been – yeah, he might have been in the backfield that time. But. Yeah. So we're uh, hoping for big things again this season as we uh, move to 2-0. and I had a couple other scores I wanted to kind of read through as we're waiting on Coach Carper. I tell you what, with the uh, with all the things that he does after the game with uh, the alma mater, and then they they have a meeting out at uh, midfield. Uh, it takes up a little while longer than than it has, you know, previous coaches to get up here to the booth to do some interviews. He's uh, in demand. He is in demand, especially when you're two and zero and undefeated as a football as a head football coach. Uh, just reading through a couple of scores here. Alexander leads South Point fourteen to two. Brad, did I try to tell you about that name? Are you? I mean, obviously you picked South Point on the podcast to, to lose that game to to Alexander. Yeah. I picked I picked South Point. I look like an idiot now, but um, were you really? Did you really think that Alexander could 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 win that game, struggling the way they did against Beaver Eastern? I, in, I in thought they one? had a really legitimate chance. Uh, I didn't think they would pitch quite the shutout that they have so you know so far. Well, but uh, you know I thought they'd be in a little bit of a battle. Twenty-one, fourteen, something in that range. Twenty, fourteen. Now some of these scores, and and it'll be interesting as we uh, well, as some we, of the, some of the scores to the south are going to be behind because games were delayed. Well, not only that, but how many of these games are going to be uh, affected by the weather that we we got by here with you know without seeing that weather but right uh, the teams of the south especially you know when they did get back up and going if you're on a grass field like we have here it's definitely going to play a factor in that so you think that could be uh, uh something that oh absolutely you know, that, that that held that score low for the alexander spartans it, it very well could be okay another another score uh this and this says first quarter this is score stream so you can't always go by it but uh 22 to nothing piked in over wellston in the first quarter well again um I thought Piketon's quarterback might have been one of the top three or four quarterbacks around the area. Um, we knew that Wellston was going to have some struggles with some, you know, underclassmen playing a lot more minutes than yeah. what they they had in the past. Twenty-two uh, nothing. I don't. I don't know about that. I wasn't sure about that. I thought it was. It was surely a win for Piketon. Maybe something a little bit closer, you know. And I really didn't expect him to put up more than. Maybe another score is what I really thought Piketon would put on him. Well, I think if that's the case, Piketon is a legit contender in the SVC. I, I, I believe so, especially I, – I believe Paint Valley struggled tonight. Yes. I, I believe they got beat pretty badly. Uh, Zane Trace, I think, surprised some people this evening with the score of their game. Um, Unioto hanging in with uh, Newark – no, not Newark Catholic. They were playing uh, Amanda Clear Creek. Amanda Clear Creek. Uh, that score was a little surprising. Um, low scoring. I uh, actually thought maybe Unioda would come out and show a little offense this week. But, so, uh, as we look ahead to Trimble next week, they uh, they were up on Miller forty six to nothing at the half, which is about what you would expect uh, a Trimble Miller game to be at. Sorry, uh, Miller. Like, yeah, I mean, it's just just the way it is with Trimble being as dominant as they are. Um, as we uh, as we have the band show again, before we get into that, we uh, we have the band play uh, post game show. So if we want to pan out on the uh, if we want to pan out on the band, Roger, Roger, he's he's paying attention to the band. He's watching the band. I guess you're going to continue to watch us instead, but you can listen to the band. You can listen to the band. The band always does a halftime show, obviously, and then they do a post game show, which is really cool. Um, they do it because the band boosters' parents are the ones that work concessions. Yeah, so they do it so the the parents, and obviously, it's the busiest time of the game is during 
halftime right, for right. the concession stand. So they always play this post game show, so that way those those parents can can watch the uh, the show and they play a full show. And they're seventy some strong. They're really good. They're playing a. Um, and I know this because my stepson Braden's one of the bass drummers, uh, but they're playing a. Um, um, Disney theme halftime show for the first half of the season because they're actually going to Disney uh, in the spring next year. So wasn't aware of that. Yeah, they're going to cool. be in a they're going to be in a parade. Uh, there's a parade route down there. They're going to do and they're going to play just like they do in the parades around here. Uh, so they're really excited about that. I'm excited. I might be a chaperone, although I've, I've, I've never been to Disney. So I see. I see what the angle is. It's just going to be though. warm and it's going to be February, Brad. So. Why so wouldn't do I, you do that? Do I get a, get the invite? Do I get a go? Or are if you, you taking wanna, your wife? Well, she, she'll be there too, obviously. But uh, okay, if if you can try to get Roger's attention here, Roger. I'd like to. Hey, Roger! I'd like to get the. Uh, you want to pan out on the the on band. band? Some more uh, some more airtime there. There we go. As we continue to wait on Coach Carper, I don't know if we're going to get Coach Carper or not. Uh, uh, he's he's oh, right he down, now. He's I, down here. He's down there talking to the to the radio. He's talking to Bob. Yeah, so we'll get him up here in just a moment uh, before we end things here. Again, Vinton County twenty to nothing winners over the Crooksville Ceramics. Uh, Logan falls to Taze Valley thirty five to nothing. Um, West Holmes. 49, Philo 12. What's that say about Athens, man? That's uh, a, I will say this, though. The Philo win over Athens last week. Athens had a lot of kids out uh, in that week one game. Athens, I saw a score earlier. It looked like Athens was down by three or four scores. Am I wrong in thinking uh, yeah, that? Yeah, they were. I thought maybe they were. I wasn't sure. Hey, uh, I think we got Coach Carper coming up we here We do with have us. Coach Carper. I'll give him the headset here. Know, Coach so Carper. Congratulations, oh, Coach. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Two and zero, Coach. What's it feel? Uh, it feels amazing. You know, it's fun. It's uh, it's great to be uh, on the winning side of things. You know, so I'm excited, man. Just you know, we get we're just ready for next week now. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about this one here. Uh, you know, on the broadcast, we were talking about this defense, right? Um, mm -hmm. You guys have now put seven shutout quarters. Combined this this year to start the year out out of eight quarters seven of them you've shut people out and not only have you shut people out but you shut Unioto out in three quarters last week which is a really good offensive team yeah. uh, they scored against um, Manda Clear Creek tonight which is one of our state powers in in this area so um, what what's it mean to uh, really because that's one thing we questioned was the defense coming into the season. What's it mean to – and you talked about being a defensive coach prior to the, to week one. What's it mean to be able to put on this showcase with this defense? Man, it means a lot to me, you know, because I am a defensive-minded coach, I, I feel like. But, you know, it means a lot. You know, if they can't score, they can't win. You know, that's, that's our motto, you know. And just watching the kids out there just give relentless effort, get lined up right and, and do their job, you know, is, is everything, you know. And our defense coordinator, Tim Usley, man, he does a great job. You know, Coach Hire – on the back end, along with Coach Mendez, you know, they, they all do a great job, and, and we keep each other kind of balanced, you know, and, and uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's like a big family. Defense is like a family, you know. I'm not saying that not it's not on offense, but defensively, you know, I feel like, you know, right now it is something that we have established who we are going to be. You know, and just moving forward, man, it's just, you know, just, just staying in that moment with being so. Well, let's talk a little bit about that offense. Uh, we saw it in week one, and we saw it again today. Uh, you start out kind of slow, mm -hmm. but then you get into the third quarter and the fourth quarter, and those two- and three-yard gains turn into wide open, you know, big holes. You gain a five, ten yards a clip, sometimes more than that. Is that just you guys wearing teams down, or, what, or is that adjustments you make? What is that? Well, we, we really don't make any adjustments, man. You know, it's just what we do. You know, we they, they give us a look, and, you know, we follow suit. What it is is, you know, is how we condition, how we run. You know, we wear them out, and, you know, third quarter, those two, three-yard games turn to 10, 20, you know, and – and that's just who we are, you know. And I think that's that going forward, that's going to play a huge role later in the season when we get into conference play. You know, it's just being able to to sustain those drives in the third and fourth quarter. You know, so <clears throat> it's just you know early on, you know they're not there. Everybody's fresh. You know, everybody wants to give it a hundred and ten percent. You know, so it may not be there early. You know, but just stay the course and, and press on. So. Well, we've got Trimble next week, and I know you guys are going to celebrate this win and, and, and celebrate being 2-0, and but um, I want to ask you, Trimble 
Have you heard about Trimble? Yeah, man. I <laughs> there's two teams that I always I keep I keep hearing about. And that's Nelsonville and Trimble. Yeah. And Trimble more than Nelsonville, but you know it's it's like they're the they're the bad guys of the TVC right now. You know of uh, the hockey, but you know it's um, I'm excited to go down there, man. I keep hearing about the atmosphere. I just want I want oh, yeah. I want to be a part of it. You know? So we're going to travel to Gloucester Memorial Stadium awesome. next next week, and we're we're going to take on the Trimble Tomcats. They're 2-0. Oh. Yep. Vinton County's 2-0. Oh. You've both given up one score. They've given up six points. Yep. You've given up seven points. What is it going to take to beat the Tomcats next week? <laughs> Defense, man. Defense. You know, I'm looking forward to it being a, a, a very, very tough defensive game. You know, so, I mean, I, they got good kids. They got a good quarterback's pretty decent. You know, he's a – all state player, I think he committed to Ohio State. You know, so it's just like, you know, we just got to make sure that we stay in the moment, not get too he- ahead of ourselves. If the game, if the game's bigger than us, and it won't be a great game for us. But if we could just stay in the moment and just keep pressing on and just doing those little things that we always do, you know, I think that we'll be okay. Well, you're going to have a big following over there in Gloucester. It's not that far of a drive Everybody over in Athens County. Out, yeah, uh, we've had two home games. Uh, are you satisfied with the atmosphere in these I first am, two home games? I am, man. I love it. I love seeing all the people here, all the communities coming out, you know, the people on the hill and the Viking Nation. You know, we, we got fireworks fi- firing off every time we score and every time we win. You know, it's a, it's amazing. You know, this is uh, this is what high school football is all about, and I love it. That's uh, right. That's right. Well, we appreciate you taking the time to come up here, man. Congratulations on 2-0. and Appreciate you, man. Let's make it three next week versus Let's Trimble. It. Let's do it. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate you guys. All right, Brad. So we'll close this one out. Uh, we've got Trimble next week. Vitton County 2-0. and Trimble 2-0. and They've given up six points on the season. Vitton County's given up seven points on the season. Something's got to give next week in Gloucester. The O's got to go. The O's got to go. The O's got to go. Uh, this will be our benchmark right here. I oh, yeah. think we're going to figure out exactly who we are because this this is going to be a battle. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to the shows this week. Uh, again, we want to thank our sponsor, Spring Street Sports, Ramey's Mobile Homes, and Adina, the uh, official sponsor for uh, BMG Media uh, this season as we move forward. We'll be back uh, on the air for the Athens game. Uh, that'll be the next home game. We'll go on the road next week to Trimble, uh, and then we'll go to Megs, which that should be another interesting game as we've seen uh, the high-powered offense that Culture Cleveland and the Megs, uh, Megs Marauders have early on this season uh, before we come back uh, to Vinton County to face Athens. Uh, it'll actually be senior night uh, when we come back and play Athens. I know that's something we discussed uh, yeah. prior to the broadcast today. Uh, it was confirmed that we will do senior night festivities uh, against Athens. So we're trying to get ahead of things in case cancellations that we've heard about, you know, uh, from various teams, which Let's is a real thing. It is. Uh, but hopefully, you know, that allows us, you know, four home games to uh, to get that in. Um, so hopefully that that goes off without a hitch. But uh, we'll be back for that game against Athens. Um, and, you know, until then, just, just continue to listen to uh, – Continue to listen to us on uh, the Viking Red Zone. We'll be doing podcasts every week. You can you can check them out online. We put them on Facebook and, and uh, Podbean.com. It's a it's a stream service we use, but um, you can listen to us there. Um, we'll obviously have updates for the next two weeks with with Trimble and uh, and with Megs uh, the following week. So hopefully everybody out there enjoyed the broadcast today. Uh, stay healthy, Bradley. It was a good one. Thanks for coming up, doing what you do. Hey, it, it was successful this week. Successful. We, know we had some issues last week. That's right. We think we got everything straight. We got now. the we got the uh, the bugs worked out, and we're looking forward to bringing you more uh, Vinton County Viking football action here on BMG Media Vinton County uh, as this 2021 season rolls on. The Vikings move to two and zero on the season with a twenty to nothing win over Crooksville. For Bradley Rose, I'm Nathan Lamb. This is BMG Media.